fourth inning. The next inning, the same scenario, same people on base, Cerrone, Tollison, and Henderson, and Randolph again at the plate. And watch this. He cleans the bases again. He comes through with a double. I should say two runs scored, and that made it two, 10 to 1 Yankees. Randolph had five RBIs and four hits on the day. Hudson with the distance, tying a career high, 10 strikeouts. Fanning one right there, gave up just three hits. All solo homers, and the Yankees win it 11 to 3. Meanwhile, in Boston, they were rained out against Texas. That game will be made up later on in the season. In Baltimore, Milwaukee is leading 1 to nothing. The Brewers are 6 and 0 coming into the game. Pachoric, a sacrifice fly in the second inning, accounted for the Brewers' run. Meanwhile, later on the West Coast, it'll be California at Seattle. Candelaria against Moore. And then Minnesota takes on Oakland, also on the coast. Viola against Punk. Well, TBS Sports will close out its regular season of NBA coverage this Friday night in Houston. The Rockets host the Dallas Mavericks. Both teams are headed for the playoffs, but there's some bad blood between the two since Dallas coach Dick Mott accused the Rockets of laying down in an attempt to gain a favorable playoff spot. The action begins at 8.05 Friday night right here on the Superstation. We will also be carrying over 20 games during the playoffs. Our playoff coverage begins next Thursday, April 23rd, so stay tuned for our playoff lineup. Again, a reminder, coming up shortly, the Chicago Bulls, the league's leading scorer, and Michael Jordan, who's averaging 36.7 points per game, travel to Milwaukee to take on the Bucks, who have outscored their opponents this season by over three points per contest. And again, a final from Cincinnati. The Reds beat the Braves 7-2. Gullickson gets the win, Smith the loss. I'm Charlie Neal. Thanks for watching. NBA basketball is next. April is National Cable Month. See us now on Superstation WTBS, home of great American television. The Milwaukee Bucks boast one of the best trapping defenses in the league. They prove they can do it, once holding Michael Jordan to a season low 11 points. But can they do it again? Can they corral these powerful legs? Can they break the concentration reflected in these eyes? Can they contain the NBA's most explosive player one more time? The Bucks and the Bulls, next. TBS Sports presents NBA Basketball, America's Game. TBS Sports coverage of the NBA is brought to you by Renault and Jeep, official vehicles of the NBA, and by Miller Lite. For great taste, there is only one light beer. And by AFTA, aftershave skin conditioner. Sensible care for sensitive skin. AFTA by Menin. from the Mecca in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Two playoff-bound teams, the Milwaukee Bucks and the Chicago Bulls. Hi, everybody. This is Bob Neal, along with John McLaughlin, and they're getting down to the wire in the Eastern Conference. And, John, what a very interesting Eastern Conference race it is because virtually every team of the eight playoff teams could jockey and change positions. There they are from Boston through Chicago. Now, there are at least three separate battles going on here. Boston and Atlanta could swap. Detroit and Milwaukee could swap. Philadelphia looks entrenched in fifth place, but Washington, Indiana, and Chicago all have a battle to go. And John, as we get to those two specific battles, Detroit and Milwaukee that could jockey, and Washington, Indiana, and Chicago, the remaining games really have something to do with how they may finish. Well, they certainly do, and we can take a look at them here. Uh, Detroit, of course, the top of the list. Milwaukee and Detroit could switch around. Milwaukee, since they have all home games, has the favorable schedule. There could be some switching, however. It's an exciting time. Then you look at Washington, Indiana, and Chicago. Who knows how that's going to end up because it could be a complete flip-flop as to where the schedule is or the records are right now. Chicago, a tough situation, but so does Indiana and Washington. So it will be fun to watch. You know, something that always amazes me about it is, is what difference does one position make or not? Is it better to play Boston? Is it better to play Atlanta? 
Well, what do you think? I think most of the coaches would say right now, we have no idea what might happen because we might win certain games and someone else may lose a game we thought they might win. So they're going to say, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to worry about who we play when the smoke clears. I suppose most would rather not play Boston, but some say if you're going to play them, it's better to get them early because they seem a little disorganized and they're losing a few road games right now. We've got a couple of teams here, both of them have been playing relatively well lately. Chicago with the youngest coach in the league and the dean of coaches in terms of coaching at one franchise Don Nelson for Milwaukee and Doug Collins for Chicago as they go down to the wire these two teams have battled Chicago uh, and Milwaukee have played each other tough all year both have one road loss uh, to each other as you look at this game tonight stopping Jordan for Milwaukee and the Bucks have a change in the lineup a comment about that well first of all uh, what the Bucks are doing right now they're bringing Terry Cummings in off the bench that was an adjustment that Don Nelson has made he feels it gives him more scoring punch off the bench it gives him a more difficult matchup and perhaps coming stronger down the stretch. He feels it gets more out of Randy Brewer when he starts. We'll wait and see how that continues to work for Don Nelson. On stopping Michael Jordan, a wish and a Hershey bar I think is about all it takes. The Bucks will double team him. They'll try to push him outside, which most people hope that works. But if his jump shot's going down, Bob, tough. Uh, I saw Doug Collins. He has a Hershey bar in his uh, jacket pocket. We'll see if he has to pull it out. We'll be back here with the lineups and the tip-off in just a moment. We're right now these messages. In 1973, a small bar served the first light beer. The response was unanimous. Tastes great. Here was a beer with its own special brewing process. Less filling. It's brewed from the ground up, not watered down. Tastes great. It's less filling. Tastes Today, there are lots of lights around, but none are brewed like Miller Light, and none can match the taste. Tastes great! Tastes great! Hey, doll, sounds like that kind of place. There's only one light beer, Miller Light. There's something new on the road. It's built by Jeep. It's the kind of truck only Jeep could build. But it's also the kind of truck just about anybody can afford. The new short bed Jeep Comanche sport truck. It's worth a look. Get low financing or cash back on Comanche. Excludes truck shown and other two-wheel drive short beds. Superstation profile, Dion James of America's team. I'd say I'm a complete ball player. I uh, go out, I play defense, I play offense. Right now, I feel as I'm playing good baseball. Uh, line drive hitter, a little bit of speed, and a little bit of power whenever I get a hold of one. I guess everybody has that. Uh, very excited. Play ball with America's team, the Atlanta Braves. Braves versus Reds, 7.35 Eastern tomorrow. We're at the Mecca in Milwaukee, 34th sellout out of 39 games here this year. There'll be 11,000 plus as the Bucks, for the first time in the last eight years will not win uh, the division championship, but they are shooting for 50 wins once again. There's been a lineup change that John McLaughlin referred to on our opening just moments ago for the Milwaukee Bucks the last couple of games, and that is to insert Brewer as the starting center. We talked to Don Nelson prior to the game about the whys and wherefores of the lineup change. Well, I've changed my lineup, obviously, to make our ball club uh, tougher to defend, and hopefully it'll make us a better team. We think Terry Cummings, Cummings coming off the bench uh, gives us instant offense to the point that he's very difficult to play. I can sub him, really, for any of the other five. An example would be if I would sub him for John Lucas, I'd move Paul Pressey at point guard. I'd have Ricky Pierce at two, and I'd play Terry at three. I could sub him for Sigma, obviously, and then Terry would play the four spot. I could move him in at center and move Jack over, and uh, I can do all sorts of fun things with him. Don Nelson, John McLaughlin, seems like he enjoys doing the all sorts of fun things with that lineup. It really offers him a strong, particularly eight-man rotation. Yes, I think I think he enjoys being creative, and you know, he's a coach that came along with the point-forward situation using Paul Pressey at handling the ball. Since they've picked John Lucas up, of course, they don't need Pressey to do that as often, but they still do do that. So, Nelly likes to go to that type of situation and spring some new ideas. All right, let's look at the lineups now. First of all, for the visiting Chicago Bulls, notice here a change in 
the lineup. Oakley, Corzine, Jordan, and Paxson normal, but Elston Turner, John, starting there at a forward position. Right, and Doug's doing that for a strategy situation. He knows that Paul Pressey is very important to the ball handling of the Milwaukee Bucks. He feels Elston Turner, a good defensive player with good quickness, will play him defensively better than Oakley. So that's why the change. Not only an excellent first-year head coach, he's got these Bulls with 10 more wins than they had last year, but a very personable young man who loves what he's doing, and he's an excellent game coach. Going to be around a long time. Now the Milwaukee Bucks and the dean of coaches who stayed with the franchise longest, Don Nelson, will start Sigma and Pressy Brewer at center. We've discussed that. Ricky Pierce, who had been a six-man, but is starting here toward the end of the year at the off-guard position, and John Lucas, the point guard and Don Nelson 11 years with the Milwaukee Bucks and what a job he's done and when it gets playoff times this man and his basketball team are going to be tough I think they could turn into a dark horse of sorts as they get into the playoffs and I say dark horse because of all the injuries that have happened this year to the Milwaukee Bucks the officials Bill Oaks and Earl Strom on the right you know, Bob, I think just to comment briefly about the coaching situation that you touched on and, and how good Don Nelson has done in the past and, of course, how the great year Doug Collins is really having as a fine young coach. I think the really outstanding coaches when the playoffs come are so tough to beat because when you play in a series like that, I know I've seen uh, Don Nelson over the years come up with different situations as to how they will play teams or how they will exploit teams or force teams to perhaps not pick up something that the Bucks are dealing with. And that's where that good coaching comes in. And Doug Collins has said it's been a fun year, but it's been a very long year for him. And a, a, a lot of gray hairs are getting in that young head. We talked to him right prior to the game. Six, four, number 22. Well, you know, we've got to put ourselves in position right now. Obviously, you know, we feel like we've had a good year, but we want to win all the games we can win. Uh, there's a, almost a week off between the time you, you finish the season and the playoffs, so there's time to rest. So we're going to play these games, uh, you know, full bore. Uh, they're against all teams that we're going to see in the playoffs. So we've got to be gearing ourselves. The last month and a half, we've played most every game against teams except, uh, uh, I think, New Jersey and New York that are in the playoffs. So it's been a tough six weeks for us. And tonight, Chicago playing Milwaukee. On Thursday, they play Atlanta at Chicago. And then the Bulls will play at Boston on Friday. It's a tough road to go for the Bulls as they have a below 500 record right now, 39 and 40. They are 3 and 2 versus the Bucks. As you can see there, the Bulls have won three of the five. Each team has won an away game, a little bit unusual in this series. And here's the matchup tonight. It'll be interesting to see Elston Turner and Pressy matching up. And of course, also big seven foot three inch Randy Brewer at the center against Dave Corzine Brewer out of Minnesota Corzine from DePaul at the Mecca in Milwaukee one key to this ball game that, that they feel on both sides is tempo I believe that may be a stolen tip by Chicago Bucks ball but tempo is important the Bucks want a quick tempo they want to run on the Bulls the Bulls want to look for their opportunities Bob but they also don't want to get into a running game here in Milwaukee with the Bucks Jack Sigma, a trade for Alton Lister. Sigma providing offense from the outside, open scoring for Milwaukee. Sigma's a player that's been scoring a lot more the last couple of months. And against Chicago, they like to go to him early with the offense. Paxson to Jordan. Paxson, the point guard, on to Oakley. Oakley, second leading rebounder in the NBA. There's that good Bucks defense and the trap you see coming up quickly. They get it to the open man. It's Oakley from the outside. Rebound by Pierce and they're running. John Lucas. And here's Sigma inside of the open man. Ricky Pierce on the baseline. Missed it, but there's Big Brewer. And that's what he does so well, being 7-3, is get that loose ball for him. That's what he's been doing the last three or four games. He's been very aggressive, using his size. And when he moves that big body around, he can gain good position. Brewer had 19 points and 12 rebounds versus Cleveland. Played 37 minutes. Here's Paxson just inside the three-point line. Missing. Pierce having a little trouble controlling the ball. It's 4-0 Bucks. They could make it 6-0 here. Brewer from the perimeter. Not there. And this Chicago Bulls team is a good rebounding team, primarily thanks to Oakley. But as a team, they will come back in and get the boards well. That's their, one of their greatest assets. Bulls lead the league in rebound percentage, 526. From the corner, Jordan missing, Oakley, re Oakley rebounding. 
They whip it around to Elston Turner, who scores from outside. Turner only plays about 12, 13 minutes a game. This is the first time he started this year. Good ball movement, but what? They've had four jump shots outside. That's what the Bucks want. Keep them outside. Jordan with his second rebound of the ball game. It's 4-2 Bucks. Bulls can tie. Opening moments from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Corzine hits the open oak. Turner back to Corzine. Turnabout fair play. Nice hey, ball move for the Now that is beautiful ball move. And that gets a layup. And that's their first inside shot. This game's tied at four. Terry Cummings not in the starting lineup. Pierce from outside. Misses from long range. And the loose ball controlled by Michael Jordan. Bulls can take the lead. Turner. Four points for Elston early. He likes starting. Elston Turner. Michael doesn't mind passing. Even though he's still about 40% of their offense. What a great talent. <laughs> now, now we have 9.23 to go here in the first quarter. And we talked about Brewers starting and Cummings coming off the bench. And Terry's down there in front of the scorer's table. About to come into this ball game in just a moment. Jordan with his third rebound. Perhaps he's a reserve starter coming in this quickly every time. Reminds you a little of the role of Junior Bridgman in the old days for this Milwaukee club. Right. Corzine missing from the perimeter. Sigma to Lucas. Left-handed penetration by John Lucas. Tied at six. It's tied at six. And they can't get Terry Cummings into the game. He's missing some precious playing time. Looking for Jordan down low. Paxson gets him open, but it's tipped away. A nice defensive move by Preston. Ball. Here comes Terry Cummings at the ball game. 34. And as Don Nelson Terry told us, John, he can make a lot of substitutions. Four. He's coming in for four. four here, but that gives him a lot of rotation possibilities. Well, and don't forget, Sidney Moncrief is on the Bucks bench right now also. <laughs> pretty fine player as long as his knees are strong. When you go down to Cummings, Moncrief, and Hodges coming off the bench, that's pretty strong elite eight there. Jordan, beautiful move on the double bump. Jordan. And the first blood drawn in the hoop by... Michael Jordan, the NBA scoring champion. He's already wrapped that up. And, of course, you expect those types of moves from such a great player. Bulls have their first lead, 8-6. I think what the Bulls have done this year is just outstanding. These players really fill a role that they, they, they've blended well together, and I think it's a real credit to Doug Collins in knowing how to make each guy feel important and to make each guy know what he should do. Shot clock has down to seven seconds that time. They were a little disoriented on the offense as they moved it maybe a pass or two beyond where they needed it. It's tied at eight, 7.55 to go, first quarter. Terry Cummings, leading scorer on this team, handling the ball. Now, Milwaukee will run a lot of isolation offense like that. Ricky Pierce is so strong inside, has been all year long. They look for him off the ball. But Doug Collins says we've got to be aware of their isolation offense and give help as much as we can. Ricky Pierce, a lot of people think, will be voted sixth man of the year, even though this is his 29th start. He remains eligible for that award. Vinny Johnson's pretty strong candidate. He sure is. Paxson. And the rebound by Elston Turner. Drive by Oakley. Oakley has been a very fine player all year long, and, and you see on that type of move, here's a young man that doesn't possess the great skills, but works hard at it, and that was a good play on the spin move. Sick. He's got to want that shot. That's the classic Sigma location, but he misses. Tied at 10. Corzine, nice ball movement. Elston Turner scoring again. Elston Turner. Elston Turner from Corzine. at 6'11 on the break and making the play. Both of these teams are playing what you might call a three-guard offense right now. Yes. Pierce gets past Jordan. There's help from Corzine, but Jordan steals the ball. It's Bulls by two. Michael attacking. Foul as he drives. Not much else you can do with Jordan if he gets inside the paint. Well, and you might expect Jordan's going to get to the line quite a bit because of that ability to get to the basket. But the th sometimes he's so creative he gets away from the contact. The Bulls are leading by two. 6.26 to go. First quarter from Milwaukee. Because there are tough customers, Conica makes tough copiers. 
Conica Tough means quality. Copiers that copy when you want. Full featured copiers that perform with amazing reliability. Conica's Royal Copiers are sold and serviced across America and Canada. So if you're a tough customer, see the full line of Conica's Tough Royal Copiers and pick on someone your own size. Approaching landing zone. Prepare to land. Let's move! We got a connection to make. Give the Army Signal Corps 30 minutes and they can turn a mountaintop into a satellite communication station. Qualify for training like this, and you'll learn to work with some of the most exciting high-tech electronics around. Roger, Bravo 2, sit loud and clear. We got him! Goodbye! All that you can be. Did well. We're well connected, Sergeant. We'll find your future in the Army. They always talk about Michael Jordan's offense, but take a look at the D, John. Well, you talk to his coach, Doug Collins, and he will tell you he is an outstanding defensive player, and they've seen him perform this type of effort time after time. And look, his defense creates the offense, and the best offense is Michael Jordan in a one-on-two or three situation. And he gets to the line, Bob, as I'd indicated so many times. Let me give you an example. Coming into this game, he's had 922 free throw attempts. The closest to him on the Milwaukee Bucks is Ricky Pierce with 421 attempts. Outstanding. And you look at the steal, second in the NBA in steals, and Michael <laughs> Jordan blocks a shot and a half a game. You know, you're just talking about a great athlete, and that's why he's so good at every area of this game. You know, it reminds me a little bit of Sugar Ray Robinson coming off of that fight uh, just recently. People might relate to this because he plays in flurries. Sugar Ray, uh, Sugar Ray, Ray Leonard, Leonard, excuse right. me, uh, because, he, because he plays in flurries. Michael, and those flurries are enough. Aren't oh, they? And they're damaging, yeah. You get him against a rope a little bit, and all of a sudden he comes out firing at you. Well, and the Bucks only 39% at this point, and the Bulls 55 from the field. Three-point Bulls lead, 626 to go, first quarter. Speaking of that Sugar Ray Leonard Hagler fight. Hmm. What a did you get a chance to see it, John? Well, no, not until yesterday. On a delayed situation. I was in a live audience with it. It was something to see. Reminds oh. you of an NBA playoff game. Bulls by four. Sigma looked like he traveled. It's blocked by Corzine. Bulls by four can build the lead to six, which would be their largest of this game. Jordan's open and hitting. Michael Jordan. 16-10, the Bulls by six. Moncrief getting set to come into the ball game for Milwaukee. Cummings misses. Loose ball foul. It's going to be on Oakley. Well, this is why you talk about blocking out so you can get the inside position on a bigger man. Ricky Pierce was inside, and because he was, he kept the number two rebounder in the NBA from getting one more. And here comes Sidney Moncrief, who's had trouble with his knees, his feet. He's played hurt all year. Matter of fact, he's missed 43 games. Pressy driving, missing, but he's fouled. Well, one of the things you must do against Chicago, as you must against a number of teams, is spread the floor well because they cover up extremely well in the paint. They give good help, and you see on that penetration a lot of red uniforms coming to the ball. Comes Pressy. Paul Pressy to the line, 6'5", 4th, actually two. now his fifth year as he completes it from Tulsa. He gives the Bucks a lot of versatility. He was actually drafted as a guard, considered one of the best, if not the best, defensive guard in college that year. And the Bucks have used him primarily as a forward. He can play small people or much bigger people with that those long arms and jumping ability that he has. And he's one of that long list of Bucks players who've been hurt at one time or another this year. I think we had a line violation by the Bulls. Line violation. Strom with the call. I think they said Jordan got in too soon. Mm -hmm. at the line shooting one. So Pressy will go back and get another shot. Just talking about the Milwaukee injuries. At one time or another, Moncrief, Scott Skiles, J.R. Junior Bridgman, Keith Smith, Pressy. Right, a couple of those are still out. Smith and Skiles, bad backs. Bulls 16 to 12, 5.32 to go first quarter. The Bulls run good half-court offense. They execute very well. They do a good job of nailing people with their screens. 
Oakley with the running hook will fall between the legs of Cummings and it'll belong to Chicago. Well, Corzine and Oakley can set a pick with the best of them. And you know what a lot of players have realized a long time ago is if I set a good pick, that might get me open also or a mismatch situation. Lucas with the rebound off the missed Corzine bank shot attempt on three. Bucks can pull to within two. Cummings, a line drive. Here the ball. 16-14, Chicago. Speaking of the Bulls, Corzine's been playing very well the last few games, particularly Collins was outspoken in the fact he's played such a uh, setting picks and getting the screens and helping Jordan get open just as right. he did there. They didn't get the ball to him that time. That's really important to their success. They've got to get that strong game out of the middle. Corzine in trouble this time, though. To Turner, eight points for Elston Turner. Turner averages 3.3 a game. Yeah, he was in there to play defense, and he's showing up some offense, and Lucas will draw the foul on quick penetration at the other end. It's been interesting what John Lucas has done with this Milwaukee team, a very controlled kind of basketball team, but Lucas adds just enough adventure to it to, I really think, make them more entertaining to view. I have been very impressed with John Lucas this year. I've had an opportunity to watch him play a lot. He's done things I wasn't sure that he could do consistently. Uh, and I don't mean that uh, in taking anything away from him. Uh, we all knew of his ball handling abilities, but he is a true point guard. He really takes charge. We had a chance to spend some lunch time with John today. He talked about his tennis career. Yes. He still plays a lot. Oh, that was interesting. Once ranked 25th in the world. He felt had he stayed in professional tennis and concentrated only on that, he could have been in the top 10. Illegal defensive call, I believe, on Milwaukee, and Nelly wants to know what was that? That's the first call against the Bucks. Don Sigma. Nelson lost all that weight that's sticking over his belt right now. He lost it. <laughs> Sigma was the one. He had to be above the free throw line. <laughs> Bulls by two. Of course, on the first illegal defense, simply a warning. The ball inbounded with a new shot clock. Next one will be a technical free throw. Michael Jordan. See the isolation? Give it to Michael. Jordan. Eight points for Jordan. Scored 53 yesterday. Cummings from the baseline. Oakley to Jordan. Could be good. Didn't fall. And we've got a foul on Elston Turner. Jordan will just underlay a bit, but this is the jump shot. See how they isolate him? Now, when he has the jumper going like this, those are the nights he's capable of getting 50 and 60 because then you've got to come out and play him, and that's when he'll beat you with quickness. Speaking of quickness, you're looking at it. Block shot, Corzine. Well, that was good defense by Paxson. Great help by Corzine. The Bulls are playing some super defense. Oakley against Sigma. Tried to get it to Paxson. Lucas with a great play. Pressing. Loose ball foul. Loose ball foul. Paul Pressy on the foul. Paul Pressy. That's his first. Bulls lead it by four, 317 to go in the first quarter. So Doug Collins pulled a lineup shuffle of his own tonight as we were talking so much about Don Nelson's and started surprisingly Elston Turner at the forward. And Turner has answered offensively, has eight points already. Bulls can build the lead to six. Corzine from the perimeter. Nothing but net. Corzine, one of those centers uh, that will pick and pop because he shoots the jump shot quite well. As opposed to pick, pick and roll. <laughs> I kind of like the pick and pop just because of the sound of it. <laughs> you pop the microphone. We have a timeout in Chicago. 2.51 to go. First quarter, Bulls 22, Bucks 16. Stands tonight between the first and second quarter. Renault and Jeep, the official vehicles of the NBA presents the NBA Rule Book Quiz. Less than two minutes remain in the game, and Dallas attempts to inbounds. Away from the ball, New York is charged with a dead ball infraction. What is the ruling? Jeep Cherokee has just been reborn. It can now be ordered with a four-liter, six-cylinder, 173-horsepower engine. 
nothing in Cherokee's class even comes close. In fact, with this engine and a choice of two or four doors and two shift-on-the-fly four-drive systems, you could say nothing's in Cherokee's class. Get 2.9 financing or up to $700 cash back on select Jeep Cherokees. The NBA rulebook states that any on-court player may attempt a single foul shot for a dead ball foul. Dallas also retains possession. Basketball's a team game, but each player has his own moves to make. Sometimes you know you can do it, but sometimes you want somebody else to give it a try. On the court, good moves score points. On the road, a bad move can lose the whole game. If a driver's been drinking, make your own move. Don't let a drinking driver take you anywhere. Taking part of the show. Well, Chicago shooting the lights out 56% with 2.51 to go in the first quarter. Milwaukee having some real problems. And the backcourt scoring Chicago. Of course, the backcourt scoring yes. of Chicago is going to generally be pretty good with number 23 filling it up. Uh, Jordan, by the way, does have eight. Turner has eight. And he's listed as, uh, Jordan's listed as a guard because even though Turner is smaller, he was in primarily to play Paul Pressey, who was a forward. 2.41 to go. First quarter. Bulls to a lead here in Milwaukee. Both teams tuning up for the playoffs. Each team with two games remaining after this one. Jordan missing from the perimeter. Pressy with the loose ball rebound. Pressy with the jam. Oh, my. That's why he's called the point forward. He's very capable of taking it all the way on good penetration and quickness. Craig Hodges into the lineup now for John Lucas, by the way. Hodges, number 15. Hodges and Larry Bird fighting for that free throw percentage. Oakley with the lob. Oh, yeah. Oakley, Oakley strong inside. Great, great body. Uses it extremely well. Here comes Michael Jordan against Hodges and Sigma. <laughs> Launch. Launch that man. What can you say? Good defense starts excellent offense. Coming from the perimeter. The offense heating up. 26-20 Bulls. 1.34 to go. First quarter. Jordan with Oakley. Two-man game. Jordan for three. It'll belong to Milwaukee. Now, this is what we talked about, about defending Jordan. They want to try to play him inside, but look at the good screen, and the Bucks want to push him outside and then overplay. Once he gets it, back off and gamble on the jump shot. Sedale so three into the ball game for Chicago, number three. He replaced Paxson. Cummings fakes Corzine out of the gym and then hits from 15. Well, Dave had to go after that, you know, because Terry Cummings has that kind of range, and you've got to go out and make him put it on the floor, and then you hope you get more help. One minute left in the first quarter. Jordan saw a slice of an open on the baseline. And before you could see it, he was jamming it, and he's fouled. I don't know that I've ever watched any player that's more enjoyable than this man right here. And when you watch him play, you realize, as I was an ex-player that certainly could not jump at all and had no quickness, it makes me realize how much easier this game would have been had you had that type of jumping ability and quickness. Brewer into the ball game. Sigma taking a rest for Milwaukee now. So it's Cummings and Brewer and Pressy, the forwards. Hodges and Moncrief for the guards. 29-22, Chicago, 50 seconds to go, quarter number one. Each team will be in the penalty on the next foul. Shot clock to seven, coming. That's, right. That's what Doug Collins was concerned about, the Bucks' isolation game and how to give help. Five-point Bulls lead. Oakley. Nice move from Virginia Union's proud son. Out of the CIAA, Central Intercollegiate Athletic Association. Okay. I wore a cap in Moscow this summer on the Goodwill Games that said CIAA, and a lot of the uh, Moscow guards thought it said the wrong thing. They followed you around, huh? I explained it was an athletic conference. Oh, with that baby face, they wouldn't follow you around. <laughs> 
Here steals. comes Michael. Has three on the right. Pulls up. Gets the bounce at the buzzer. 15 first quarter points for Michael Jordan. And the Bulls lead by nine. Stuff on my players, and they love me for it. Ooh, shucks, that's why they invited me here tonight to share some Miller Lights to show their appreciation. You know, light tastes great and it's less filling. So here's to the greatest emotion in the world: the friendship between a coach and his players. No thanks, boys. I gave up cigars for a great get together. There's only one light beer: Miller Light. I just love these reunions, don't you, boys? <laughs> Ooh, they love me. You know you can do the job. All you need is a chance. Look what the Air Force Reserve can offer. Good pay and benefits. Technical training in a variety of fields. And more education with the new Reserve GI Bill and the Community College of the Air Force. All for two weeks a year and one weekend a month. Today's Air Force Reserve. A great way to serve. The Great American Face. Strong. Sensitive. The Great American Razor. Actra Plus. Solid. With the Lubra Smooth Strip for extra protection. The Great American Face deserves the Great American Shave. Actra Plus. Only from Gillette. My new Olympus is the only autofocus SLR with a built-in flash. Like this. In case I want to shoot, like this. The new Olympus OM77AF. The only autofocus SLR that does it all. TBS sports coverage of the NBA is being brought to you by Renault and Jeep, official vehicles of the NBA. With two each. That means well, when the big men try to put the ball on the floor and take it to the basket, the little guys will take it away from them and score, perhaps, as the Bulls do in this situation. Perhaps only Ralph Sampson would get away with putting it on the floor in that situation. Uh, uh, Bill Fitch would disagree a little yeah. bit. <laughs> Speaking of Bill Fitch, Dick Mata and Bill Fitch with some controversy a couple of weeks ago about the Houston effort in winning games down the stretch. Mata gets Whoa. a fine for a comment, and those two will take their teams against each other Friday night on the Superstation, by the way. We'll be in Houston for Dallas-Houston. Think they'll shake hands before the game? Good question. Never we'll, know. We'll see. Yeah, that'll be fun. Well, look at the shooting percentage. That certainly tells most of the first quarter. Second quarter, Bulls lead by nine. Opening moments. So they'll three. Gets it to Michael Jordan on the reverse. Doesn't go, but Corzine's there. Loses it out of bounds. Milwaukee ball. Excellent start by Chicago, and with the problems they've had on the road and those, as good as Milwaukee plays at home, it was important for Doug's team to come in here and get a good, quick start. Hodges for three. One of the best in the game from long range, Craig Hodges. He's been in a shooting slump lately, has he, has John? Well, he hasn't had as much playing time. He's had to adjust his game this year. He's done an excellent job at doing that. And from the three-pointers, the more consistent playing time you get, the better you'll shoot them. There's an interesting one for you. Jordan, uh, three foot loose ball foul. foul. Jordan feeding Corzine inside out. Except, you know, Corzine likes that little jumper, and, you know, he's not the kind of guy that's going to go in and jump over you. So he has to settle for the outside. They like him outside sometimes within that medium range. <laughs> Corzine played 45 minutes yesterday in Chicago against Indiana. Real workhorse. So, but he may tire a little bit tonight. Hodges over Corzine. And I want to tell you, he is fouled. He knows that he took it down there. Jordan's been outspoken, by the way, against some of the other big men and how rough they are yes. inside. Yes, he has been. And uh, we'll look first, see Hodges take it to the basket. Actually, he does a good job of getting himself out of a difficult situation, taking it to the big guys. And you hope you hear that whistle and it goes the right direction. Jordan was talking specifically of Bill Ambeer at Detroit. Lambeer's response is, when the guys bring it in here, they got to know they're going to pay. As a guard, John, you just rolled your eyes. You must have a feeling about it. Well, I, I think there are a lot of ways to pay. <laughs> and uh, some are more physical than others. You can run for offers. Bill Bradley, Tom yeah. McMillan, John yeah. McLaughlin. Mike Brown entering the ball game for Chicago. Only plays about 10, 12 minutes a game. He's been giving some mid-game reserve time of late. That's He's a truckload. Oakley-type body. 
every shot Hodges misses from the free throw line gives Larry Bird a little bit of an edge in being number one in the NBA from the line. Bulls 33, Bucks 28. Oakley, loose ball rebound. Jordan's wide open. Beautiful move, missed the hoop. McKeskey in for Milwaukee with a rebound. Hodges on the run. Ricky Pierce to Moncrief. Faking the move, and here's McKeskey from the baseline. Well, he surprised the Milwaukee fans with his baseline jumper. Well, they love him here. Uh, he's a Milwaukee-type player. He digs in, he plays hard for them, and in the past, he's hit that jumper very well. Oakley. Jordan one on one with Moncrief. Moncrief stripped it away. And Sedale three does likewise at the other end, but steps on the baseline. Oh, what a great move. Hodges can't believe there was no foul, but if in fact there was not, what a job Sedale three did in getting front of the penetration. Hodges had the momentum. Look at it. There he saw his left foot touching the baseline. And a little bit too intense a defense there. Brad Sellers, by the way, in for Chicago currently. Where's number six? Elston Turner picks up the foul. That ball foul. And Turner just came in the game for uh, Michael Jordan. The foul went on uh, Brad Sellers, I believe. Yes, the foul went to Brad Sellers, his first. At the conclusion of tonight's game, John and I will be selecting the Miller Lite player of the game. There's Ricky Pierce with his 88%. He's second on this team. He's had a great year. He's uh, very difficult to handle offensively. He does a good job at defense. The Bucks use him primarily running off screens under the basket. Bulls had led by nine. 33-24, and now it's 33-32, an eight-point scoring binge for Milwaukee has brought them to within one. Now, the Bulls don't have the strongest offensive unit in right now, so the Bucks want to keep the pressure on and keep them outside. Sellers with a tough jump shot. The offensive threat in the game right now is Brad Sellers, who's been scoring about 15 points a game of late, had 15 against Indiana yesterday, and that shot, by the way, was at the shot clock buzzer. Beautiful move. Hate to see that not fall after that beautiful Whoa. effort. Passed it to himself. Right, Earl right. Strom said nobody touched it on Milwaukee, so Sellers threw it in the air and caught it on the other side of the hoop. And the ref's allowing a lot of contact, as we've seen on the penetration, that last play by Hodges. Milwaukee can tie it with a three-pointer here. 8.57 to go first half. Lob to Brewer, the 7-3 center lays it in. Now see, that was a call of play because the Bucks want to take advantage of Brewer's size inside on this smaller Bulls group. Brewer and McKeskey in right now. Wow. And they're going to call Brewer for stepping up. 45. Now see what Brewer can do. The ground in the ball game, who's not that much of an offensive threat. He can roam a lot and give the Bucks defensive help. Oakley. Down to Elston Turner. We've got a loose ball foul. Coming up at halftime, Charlie Neal will bring you up to date on all the scores around the NBA tonight. Some important games as the playoff races draw down to the wire. Plus, Charlie will also have a conversation with a couple of NBA alumni who have assumed new leadership roles. Bill Russell talks with Senator Bill Bradley and Congressman Tom McMillan. So Corzine comes back into the ball game and Oakley rests now. Corzine, Brown, and Sellers up front. And the guards for Chicago are Turner and Threat. Street is hammered. No call. Shot clock recycle. Strom's telling him to recycle it right now as he goes to the side. It's at 21 seconds now. Well, I think what he's saying was they did recycle it, and they should not have recycled it because uh, the ball Jenny glass. Let's look. Look at the contact here. The Bucks come to the penetration. Sedale goes down. The ball apparently hit nothing, so they come bring the clock back to 17. 
Don Nelson, just out of your picture to the left, coming up talking to Earl Strom. Bulls by one. Shot clock now at 10. Sellers from the baseline. Nice play. You've got a screen up high by Corzine. You have a good shooter in the corner. As his man leans away from him to give help, he's open. Almost stripped away by Elston Turner. Turner did everything he could do to stop Ricky Pierce. I've been impressed with the Bulls' defense so far in this first half. They've done a good job, and that's an example of doing your job, but the offensive player gets it anyway. Turner saw Sellers too late, and Brewer came over to knock it out of bounds. 11 seconds on the shot clock for the Bulls. They lead by one, 7.40 to go second quarter. Hodges with the steal. Pierce with a layup. And the Bucks have taken the lead. They trail by nine as we begin this quarter. And you see the importance of turnovers because you can strike quickly off of them. Chicago has scored only four points in this quarter. Sellers in heavy trouble. Oh, my goodness. I think perhaps uh, he'll make a call on the travel situation. Sellers makes the most out of it. Now with Jordan on the bench, the offensive threat for Chicago right now is Brad Sellers. He has six. He's taking charge in that area. On creep the track. Doesn't get the roll. There's Corzine. Sellers has had a good season, getting more playing time and responding to it. Sellers very active. He's a seven-footer, and he moves very well with that long, lanky body. Put him on a weight program in the offseason to see what might happen, huh? <laughs> Brown. Sellers is there again. Loose ball foul. Probably on Mike. Let me hold up to see who it is. I think Mike Brown. Yes. 39 or 38. Timeout on the floor. Bulls 39, Bucks 38, 625 to go in the second quarter. More and more men are keeping their bodies in shape. Their faces, too. Shaving's rough on your face. So every day, after every shave, splash on Skin Bracer. Skin Bracer cools, soothes, tightens pores. That's the tingle. It smells great, too. But Skin Bracer's not cologne. It's skin care you need. That's why more men are saying... Thanks. I needed that. Skin Bracer takes care of men who take care of their skin. Skin Bracer aftershave. Bye, baby. Without their nameplates, you might not know one five-passenger sedan from another. But take a good, hard look at this car. You'll find it has more standard power than most cars in its class. More room inside than any car in its class. And it comes with one of the best new car warranties anywhere. Just what kind of a car is this? It's the new Renault Medallion. Surprise? I imagine the competition will be, too. Tuesday. You got anything you want to say? Don't breathe on me. You smell bad. Forrest Tucker in The Plunderers. 10.05 Eastern on the Superstation Tuesday. The Superstation is the way to see the NBA at the hoop. On Friday night, NBA. Mark Aguirre leads the Maverick assault against Akeem the Dream Olajuwon and the Rockets. Let's all go to the hoop with Dallas and Houston. Live at 8.05 p.m. Eastern on the Superstation. Friday. When you want to see the best, it's WTBS at the hoop. This was a set play the Chicago's ran very well with Brad Sellers, the seven-footer in the corner for the jump shot. They have that much confidence in his outside game. Talk about the great rookies. Here's one that's uh, really coming on toward the end of the year. Most people think the rookie of the year balloting will probably go between Harper of Cleveland and Person at Indiana. Would you agree? Yes, I would agree. It could be very close. At the end of the season, I wouldn't mind having Brad Sellers either. He's, he's improved rapidly. Bulls by one. Here's the isolation game the Bucks will run, so the Bulls come with the help, but Terry Cummings gets away from it to the baseline. Terry Cummings, 10 points off the bench tonight. Bucks by one, seesaw scoring lead at the moment. Corzine. Looking for help, shot clock to seven. 
All of a sudden, Jordan's open. Well, that's not the right man to lose on defense. <laughs> Everybody's got everybody, and one red jersey blazes out of there, and he's got a black 23 on the chest. It's like the crook seeing Superman, right? <laughs> Bulls by one. Sigma with nine seconds on the shot clock. Fakes Corzine. Corzine comes down, goes back again, and blocks it. You know, it's not easy to block Sigma's shot either because of the way he releases the ball, and, and Corzine's done it twice tonight. Paxson back in the ball game. Bad pass. Pierce. Now see, that was one of those turnovers. Corzine stepped back rather than to the ball, and the pass was to the or to the basket. I think, and this is always could be controversial, but I think Chicago's got to get a real big league point guard before they can go any place. And I think Chicago also needs another strong scoring big man. Right. If they need two key players. Well, and if you're going to carry that, we may get ridiculous here, but look at Mike outside. Michael He'd probably like a, a center as well. <laughs> well, three quick number ones, and Chicago could be right well, there uh, playing uh, L.A. and Boston and Atlanta. Right? That's a turnover. No, almost turnover, but that's going to be a foul on Michael. You know, that sounds more oh, harsh than we Michael mean for it to short. be because these men have done a great job. Two However, those are some weak areas. Look, see, the double team came up. Michael beats the double team, which was Terry Cummings, to the baseline. And he beats it with individual effort as opposed to beating it by hitting an open man or something. He can slide right through that. I, I have never seen a player that can beat double teams better than Michael Jordan. Doug Collins had an interesting comment. He said, if there's one thing Jordan can improve on his game, you think he couldn't improve on anything. He said, and that is the productive scoring pass out of the double team. Yeah. Well, that's really looking for everything, however. And I, I, but, but I think that's a good point. Uh, but one thing that helps on the productive pass are the teammates moving to the open spots for the productive pass. They've got to be cutting to the basket, not just fading away for jump shots. And that requires the supporting cast here. You know, that's an area where Keen Elijah one still is, is, has to improve when he's doubled up to make that pass for the basket. Although, if I'm a coach and I know I got a guy as good as Michael Jordan and that he might get a little better, that sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Bucks had led by one, and Jordan puts the Bulls up by one, and Michael has 21 points. And he's getting too many wide open shots for Don Nelson. 4-10 to go, second quarter. Sigma in the paint. Bucks back to the lead. It's seesaw time at the Mecca in Milwaukee. See, the Bucks have the advantage of the line now. They can get to the line on every foul, whereas the Bulls won't. The Bucks only two team fouls. It'll belong to Chicago with 12 seconds. We're talking about Michael Jordan's 21 points, and he's got the 21 shooting 60 percent. He's got a number of jump shots also in that 60 percent. His average just dropped a couple. Bucks can go up by three or more here. Pressing four three. And the Bucks go up by four. Four, four, four. Pressing. Up to the Many people don't play him for that, but I've seen him make it a number of times, and it will surprise some teams. Banks in the paint. Missing Oakley. Guess who? Basket. Oakley is an excellent rebounder, as we've indicated. Therefore, when you're playing against him, what do you think? Well, you know he's going to get defensive rebounds, but you want to think, don't give him offensive rebounds. Tough to prevent. Oakley the line, 3.18 to go, second quarter. Bucks 49, Bulls 47. And uh, as I look onto the court and see Gene Banks in the ball game, number 20 for Chicago. Now, he's the player who normally starts who didn't. Oakley misses the free throw. Banks playing with a sore hand. You see the left fingers over yes. there. Yeah, the little the finger is taped to the one next to it. He said, I had a problem with it. Cummings from the line. He was open because Jack Sigma set a screen. Oakley and Cummings really battling there away from the ball. Paxson trying to get it to Oakley. That's a super matchup. Paxson. Pressing with a rebound. Outlet Cummings. Beautiful play to Lucas. 
Cummings with great port awareness, eyes in the back of his head. Two super alert outlet passes, first by Pressy, then by Cummings. 53, 47 bucks, 2.30 to go. Second quarter. Chicago's only scored 14 points in this quarter. Jordan and the tip in by Oakley. Oakley with eight. Oakley. Oh, so he can get to the glass some because his man will go to the penetration of Jordan. Cummings over Jordan. Missing. Rebound Oakley again. Two minutes in the period. Oakley with nine rebounds. He's second in the league with 13.2 average. He's going to break that average tonight. And from long range, just inside three-point territory. Oakley with 10 points now, and it's a two-point Bucks lead. 144 to go second quarter. Oakley 44% on the year from the field. Didn't look like it on that shot, did it? Lucas with the penetration. Lucas has eight. Actually, Pax has done a good job of not allowing easy penetration like that, and he counters John quickly. 14-footer for John Paxson out of Notre Dame. Bucks by two. Evenly balanced game. Second half will be interesting to see the adjustments coming here. Jordan. Not a bad play by John Lucas. He didn't undercut Jordan, but he certainly used his body as well as you can to stop the score. First number two. Although it disappointed the fans a little because everybody comes to see yes, Michael yeah. Jam even in Milwaukee. 106 to go, second quarter. I'd like to show you something that's a bit new for us, something bigger. It's called medallion. And it has uh, one or two competitors. If you want a lot of standard horsepower, you can eliminate a few. A lot of passenger room, a few more. A lot of cargo space, still more. Then, if you consider that this medallion has one of the best new car warranties anywhere, I bet you end up right where I am now. Conica Tough. Conica's Royal Copiers, the answer for tough customers. A full line of copiers that have proven themselves tough in businesses from coast to coast. Copiers backed by nationwide sales and service that's as tough as it is responsive. And that's not just tough. That's tough to beat. America's game. It's fantastic. Oh, Look at Oakley and Terry Cummings. You think it's uh, not a little physical out there? Now, Oakley goes with it a little bit. Cummings pushes him. Oakley tries to draw the foul and doesn't get it. Cummings comes back for a quick post-up, double up, and then throws the ball away. Charles Oakley's not going to be pushed over by many players in the league, one of the strongest NBA players. Field goal percentage. The Bucks picked it up a bit from the first quarter. They're now shooting 55%. Chicago still hanging in there tough at 52%. But in this quarter, the Bucks are shooting 75% and the Bulls 44. That's the big difference in the second quarter. And Jordan with the missed free throw. This program authorized under rights granted by the National Basketball Association solely for the entertainment of our audience. And any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the NBA is prohibited. Brewer in for Cummings for Milwaukee. And Granville Waiters, also out of Ohio State University, comes in for Charles Oakley for the Bulls. That's to give Oakley a little rest and also counter the big guys of the Milwaukee Bucks with Sigma and Brewer. 
105 to go, second quarter. Bucks lead by one. Brewer has it battered away. I thought Jordan was going to get another steal. The foul is going to be on Grandpa Waiters. Well, that's the other point, the most important point. They didn't want to get that foul on Oakley, and you get him on the bench, which is 55 seconds now to go in the ball game, knowing the Bucks might come up and try to post these big guys up. Brewer goes to the line. At halftime, Charlie Neal will be along with all of the scores, highlights, and news from around the NBA, plus a conversation with a couple of NBA alumni who have assumed new leadership roles in our nation's capital. Bill Russell talks with Senator Bill Bradley and Congressman Tom McMillan. Maybe Russell's positioning himself here, huh? For a run. I understand yeah. he's going to be a candidate for president. <laughs> well, uh, that will be Jack Kemp just announced. I think those will be great interviews. I'd like to see that. The ball belongs to Chicago. Uh, no, no. Earl Strom says, my mistake. That was Buck's ball. He just pointed the wrong direction. He knew whose ball it was. He just pointed the wrong way, he's saying. And Chicago was trying. You can see it went off Paxson's arm. Yeah. And Chicago was trying to inbound it and get moving before he could change his mind, but to no avail. <laughs> the Bucks make a change, bring Lucas in for Bradley. As, that's an offensive change, a little chess game. Pressing Lucas. Pierce, Brewer, and Sigma. Turner with the foul from behind as Pierce drove. And Elston Turner has his second foul. Now three comes in for Paxson. A lot of players shuffling here. And that lineup is what you see most clubs do now. They'll give a good ball handler the ball out at the top, and they'll put two men on each side of the floor. Then from there, they'll do different things, like the Bucks like to run Pierce off the screen on the box. Now even more as Jordan and Sellers come in, and Waiters and Banks leave for the final 35 seconds of the half. Bucks leading by one. We're seeing defensive teams and offensive teams. A little like football, huh? Platooning in basketball. That's tough. Pierce with 13 points tonight. Five out of five at the line. And here comes McKeskey. Some of the same. Going to get the foul on Sigma. So they bring McKeskey in. Now you can do this type of thing if the, the dead ball at the right time. Same with Dudley Bradley, who's an outstanding defensive player. 35 seconds to go. It is Bucks by three. All the scores and highlights of another NBA action for you at halftime. Shot clock down to 10. Jordan isolated and driving over Bradley. Double clutch, missing. It'll belong to Chicago. Uh, the Bulls now, seconds. yeah, now they can run it down all the way. Good defense that time on Jordan. He had three defensive players on him, however. There's the time remaining in the quarter. Of course, the shot clock's off. Sellers from the perimeter. Down it. Brad Sellers. One point Bucks lead. Sellers has really been an offensive punch here for Chicago when they lacked offensive punch in this quarter. Brewer at the buzzer won't go. Bucks lead at the half by one, 57-56. Well, these next-door neighbors on Lake Michigan into a rough-and-tumble scoring battle here tonight. We'll be back in just a moment. Only Just because you've washed your car doesn't mean you're finished. After each wash, you need some armor all on the dash, the bumper, and especially the tires. Armor All. It's the finishing touch every time you wash your car. You're my dream. And now, introducing Clean Start, the new cleaner which safely removes tough dirt. Clean Start, only from Armor All products. According to the book, we got three minutes. Tonight, we're going to beat the book. Let's move out. In today's field artillery, the emphasis is on training and motivation because a high-tech system like this Army rocket launcher is only as good as the people who run it. We're here. Arm rockets, fire. Did we beat the book, Sergeant? We rewrote the book. Find your future in the Army. 
This is Charlie Neal in Atlanta. Coming up next on the Prudential Sports Update, we'll take a look at scores and highlights from tonight's other NBA action. And we'll talk with two men who have made the transition from the basketball arena to the political arena. All that and more are coming up next. Hey, guys, great barbecue. Yeah, plenty of Miller Light. Have a can, Rodney. This one's empty. Mighty fine playing, Jim. Wouldn't me. Something tells me we're not alone in the universe. Hey, you're right, Numa. I wonder what they want. Probably our Miller Lake, because it tastes great. That's silly. Hey, say, Mark! Doomed. I'll tell you, we don't have no respect. So this is Earth, huh? Where were the girls? Wow! Well, what a pack of handsome guys! No matter where you're from, there's only one light beer. Miller Light. <laughs> I tell you, it's not easy being us, huh? Oh, what a crowd! What a crowd! This is Jeep's all-new four-liter six-cylinder engine. It has sequential multi-point electronic fuel injection. It puts out 173 horsepower and 220 foot-pounds of torque. But most important, if you put this new engine in a Jeep Cherokee or Jeep Comanche, you're going to see more speed and power than you've ever seen from vehicles like this. Just remember where you saw it first. Get 2.9 financing or up to $700 cash back on select Cherokees and Comanches. TBS sports coverage of the NBA is brought to you by The Prudential, offering a full range of insurance and other financial services. With the right choices, with the right guidance, the sky's the limit. The Prudential, your rock in financial services. Welcome back. I'm Charlie Neal. This is the last week of the regular season for the NBA, and the feel for the upcoming playoffs just about set. There's still a number of teams jockeying for positions in the playoffs, while teams that will not be in the playoffs are playing for respectability. Now in New York tonight, the Knicks are hosting the Detroit Pistons. The Knicks are trying not to finish in the cellar of the Atlantic Division, while the Pistons, whose loss to Washington yesterday, eliminated them from the Central Division title race. Bernard King got his first start since 1985 tonight, and he came across the lane with a hook shot like that, and looking like the Bernard King of old. Isaiah Thomas, the Iron Man for the Pistons this year, has not missed a contest, has played all 78 games for the Pistons. Gerald Wilkins nails the jumper here, the younger brother of Dominique, averaging over 18 points a game, and Adrian Dantley with a strong move for the basket, averaging 21 points a game, but his production is down about five points over his career average, but Detroit right now leading New York in the second period, 35 to 27. Meanwhile, in Philadelphia tonight, the 76ers are leading Washington, 99-93. That's in the fourth period. The Bullets have not played well on the road this year, but have beaten the Sixers three of the four meetings this season. Both teams are in the playoffs. The 76ers holding on to fifth spot. Bullets trying to nail down that sixth position. And when I return, a look at tonight's other action, including a big game at Market Square Arena in Indianapolis between the Pacers and the Atlanta Hawks. Choosing a life insurance policy can make anyone feel helpless. You're at the mercy of strangers. Your hands are tied. You feel pressured. But help is never too far away. With Prudential, your agent has the time to talk to you, listen to you, and work with you until you have a piece of the rock you're comfortable with. No wonder more people choose Prudential for life insurance than any other company. You'll feel right by the rock. Prudential Life Insurance. Yesterday, the Atlanta Hawks crushed the New Jersey Nets. That win, coupled with Detroit's loss to Washington, gave the Hawks their first divisional title since 1980. The record stands right now at 54-24, and 24, which is two away from the team's all-time winning record. And with four games left, they have a good chance of surpassing that mark. But they also have to face Chicago, Indiana, and Boston in three of their final four games, all of them on the road. Tonight, they're in Indianapolis going against the Pacers, a team that has beaten them three or five meetings this year and a team that they could very well face in the first round of the playoffs. Well, Coach Mike Fratello, his team looking for their seventh straight win. 
Pacers go to the offensive glass. John Long slams down the miss by Person right there. Hawks in transition. Watch Dominique Wilkins, the second leading scorer in the NBA. He banks this one off the glass. Nice shot by Dominique. And then Tree Rollins playing the best ball of his career with the rejection on the inside. And then the transition. And Randy Whitman gets the pass from Doc Rivers. He'll pull up for the jumper. And right now, though, Indiana has come back to take the lead 45 to 38. So far this year, they seem to have the Hawks number. Later on the night, it'll be San Antonio and Sacramento. It's a battle for last place in the Midwest Division. A game is late on the West Coast. And when I return, a look at two former NBA players who are now making their presence felt at center court of the political arena. Soar beyond your expectations. Today, the Prudential can show you a new world of financial opportunities. Look to The Rock for stocks and bonds, mutual funds. Feel its strength in CDs, insurance, and mortgages. With the right choices, the right guidance, you can move mountains. The Prudential. Your rock in financial services. TBS sports coverage of the NBA has been brought to you by the Prudential, offering a full range of insurance and other financial services. With the right choices, with the right guidance, the sky's the limit. The Prudential, your rock in financial services. Over the years, a number of athletes have made their way from the world of professional sports to the political arena. The most famous is former Buffalo Bills quarterback Jack Kemp, who has announced his candidacy for president. Well, the NBA has produced two politicians recently, Bill Bradley and Tom McMillan, and our Bill Russell had a chat with both of them. This segment of tonight's NBA telecast is brought to you by Milky Way. A Milky Way a day helps you work, rest, and play. We're here in Washington, D.C to talk with two former NBA basketball players who've gone from the hardwoods to the corridors of power, from playing by the rules to making the rules. Senator Bill Bradley from the state of New Jersey and Congressman Tom McMillan from the 4th District in Maryland. I'm gonna start with you, Bill. How did your basketball experience make an impact on what you're doing now? Well, a lot of things. I think, first of all, um, traveling on the road in America for 10 years gave you a chance to see the country as a whole. Traveling with an extraordinary group of human beings gave you a perspective on life on the road with a group. Um, understanding that uh, there's a richness to the experience of defeat just as there is a peak to the experience of uh, winning a championship. Um, there are things happen on the road, um, incidents occur, uh, people you meet, uh, and you get a kind of mosaic which in a very real sense amounts to the country. You don't get if you're in one place all the time, every day. Now, when Tom McMillan, I see you can tell the difference between these two guys. One guy's got a six-year contract and one guy's a two-year contract. <laughs> and you can tell by the way they dressed who's got the two-year contract and who's got the six-year contract. <laughs> I've got the gray hair. Right. <laughs> Tom, things, it could also be said about you that you were a scholar that, that happened to play basketball along the way. Yeah. Have the things that you learned in basketball been of help to you in your political life? Well, I would concur with what Bill said about, you know, the experiences that you really derive from the game. And I certainly did, and I owe a great deal of my existence to it. Um, but I think there's a lot of intangibles that come to play here that, you know, the House of Representatives is a very collegial body. You have to get along. There's 435 people and you really, in order to pass something, you've got, you've got to have a consensus. And I think understanding what it means to get along, to be part of a team and to understand how to work in that framework is very important. Um, you know, you, you understand the vicissitudes of failure and, and winning. Uh, uh, you're on a court, uh, you miss a shot at the end of the game, uh, fans boo you. Uh, it's the same way in politics. Uh, there, there are votes that you take they don't like. But you always have to look at the long view in this, in this business. You cannot be in politics without high energy, I don't think. It's, uh, it's part of it. And, you know, I, I derived a lot of my high energy uh, from, from just being involved in sports and so forth. So those are some things that have been important to me. You know, um, 
I was in the Senate about four months, and uh, it was late one night, and I was in the Senate Democratic cloakroom, which is the room right off the floor of the Senate. And I looked around and I saw one senator who was angry, one senator who was pacing, one senator who was reading, one senator who was uh, making a telephone call, one senator who was talking furiously. And I, I said, you know, this isn't a lot different than the Nick Locker room. And at core, it's not. Obviously, there are big differences. But at core, they're both about getting people from extremely different backgrounds to come together and agree on a common objective, and then to work toward that objective because they realize that they're all going to be better off if it is achieved. So I think there's a real similarity, certainly on an emotional level, between working in a legislative body like the U.S. Senate and being a member of a team that succeeds. Sometimes this road never ends, but there's nothing else I'd rather do. You know what it means to work hard and what it takes to have fun, to help you through it all. What do you got that's cold? There's Milky Way. Go ahead. Give yourself the time to enjoy all the goodness of a quarter cup of milk, natural cane and corn sugars, and thick, thick chocolate in every bar. What a way to end the day. A Milky Way. Before we return to the second half of tonight's Bucks Bulls game, let's enjoy a special play from the NBA. Valvoline presents another special play in the NBA. The Hawk Spud Webb does it all. Tony misses for the 76ers. Spud comes down court, goes around Tony and the Doc for the layup. Plays like that make the NBA special. Here's what makes motor oil special. <laughs> It's the economy. Oh, Russell. Russell, what kind of motor oil are you using? Motor oil is not. Motor oil definitely is not motor oil. A four-cylinder engine works harder and needs the extra protection of specially formulated Valvoline foreguard. Not much of a break this year. It's the economy. Oh, Russell. As always, thanks for watching. I'll be back at the end of the game to update all the scores. Now let's go back to the Mecca in Milwaukee. Bob and John are standing by for the second half of tonight's game. Gentlemen. Well, after two quarters, the Milwaukee Bucks have a one-point lead over the Bulls, and it's been a very interesting game. Both coaches start with a little bit of a lineup shuffle, and uh, yet they still play very much to a standoff in the first half. Jordan, of course, John McLaughlin has 22, which surprises nobody. I think from a Chicago viewpoint, though, the offense provided by Brad Sellers saved them from having a bigger deficit here at halftime. Oh, I agree, and when they had this lineup in there, we felt that they did not have a strong offensive unit, but Brad Sellers changed that around. Around. He has proven to be a good offensive player this year, and at seven feet tall, he can get that jump shot, and he's got an excellent touch, especially for a man of that size. Look at him. And you know, when he shoots it, it's almost off to the side, and it's kind of corkscrewed. He kind of releases the ball in a funny manner. You wouldn't teach it, but he's good with it. You know, we said that uh, we wondered whether or not Chicago needed to add a big man as to part of building the franchise there. He's a seven-footer. He is a big man, but yep. he may not be the answer in that regard. No, he weighs 212 pounds with his clothes on, I'm sure. So he's not going to be the big man to play the strong inside game for you and be a pivot man. That's why they use him as a forward. And, and even though he's seven feet, makes him a tall forward. In other respects, he plays like a small forward. <laughs> now, on the other hand, Milwaukee came out here and started this lineup that's been shuffled around the last few games by Don Nelson. And that's with Randy Brewer at center, bringing Terry Cummings off the bench. And Cummings come in and got 12 points. But the man who impressed me in terms of being an offensive force in that first half was Ricky Pierce. Well, Ricky Pierce has certainly been that all season long. And look at the field goal percentage by both teams. You would say, well, are they playing defense? I think we've seen some good defense in this first half, but both clubs shooting the ball extremely well. As a matter of fact, they flip-flopped quarters. One team shot in the 60s in one quarter, and the other one didn't, and vice versa, and so it evened out. Final two quarters. That ball slippery here to open the second half. 
Pierce with his 16th point to feed from Lucas. You mentioned him offensive in the first half. He's been very consistent all season long, both shooting that jumper and also getting inside on the interior defense. Bucks by three. Elston Turner starting the second half also. Corzine, Oakley, Turner, Paxson, and Jordan. Oakley looked away from the ball, caught it right in the shoulder. Pierce now with 18 on the Chicago turnover. 22nd Doug Collins timeout. Didn't like what he saw happening. Well, he doesn't want to turn the ball over, and that was just a miscue. Oakley started through, and they're swinging the ball to Oakley at the top of the circle. So, look, Doug wants to clarify, hey, where does everyone have to be? We're trying to post Michael up on the right box. Doug Collins quoted in the NBA publication about how much he's enjoyed his first year as an NBA head coach. He said, I am not a yeller. I don't want to humiliate guys. You know, some coaches will lose it a little bit. He says, I like to coach and teach. You see, Friday night, we mentioned this earlier, we're going to have the matchup between the two Texas powers, Houston and Dallas. Orlando Blackman, and there is Akeem Olajuwon, who's having himself a fine year. And, of course, the controversy between Mata and Fitch. What a great game. That's going to be, yeah, that's going to make it fun. Shot clock down to 10 seconds. Bucks leading by four from long range. Turner misses everything. Oakley made a photographer pay heavily for his admission tonight. It was maybe the gutsiest job in pro basketball, sitting under the bench, or under the baskets. Under the bench would be that the would, gutsiest. That might be the worst. <laughs> Bucks by four. There's a guy under the Chicago bench. We'll show you a little while. Any way to get in here. Sigma. Rebound by Oakley. Nice pass. Look away from Jordan to Corzine to Turner. Oakley with the offensive foul. Offensive. Big Brewer getting his big body in front of Big Oakley and a lot of bigness coming together. Randy Brewer weighs 260 pounds. Oakley weighs 245. <laughs> more than 500 pounds there. It's probably more than Kim before his diet. Our producers looking slim and trim, getting himself into playing shape for the playoffs. Sigma from the perimeter. Sigma does a good job of popping back for that jumper. Doug Collins, he wants to get control right now. 63-56 Milwaukee, 9.55 to go, third quarter. <laughs> oh, and Beethoven here neglects to tell us his building doesn't have an elevator. Give me a break, you guys. Hey, Mitchell, what was in that piano? Cement or what? <laughs> yes. Well, at least he did get us a keg. That was good draft beer. Yeah, well, buying that keg was the only good idea you had that day. Drinking Miller Genuine Draft will remind you of the best beer you ever had. Because it is genuine draft. Cold filtered for real draft smoothness. It's beer at its best. I should have hired skilled labor. <laughs> This is one popular approach to car design. It's an approach Honda has never taken. Perhaps that's why the Civic hatchback, with its low hood line and long roof line, is so distinctive. Very tasty. Begin with raw steel. Shape it with fire, muscle, and sweat. Polish it to razor sharp perfection. We're looking for a few good men with a medal to be Marines. TBS sports coverage of the NBA is being brought to you by Honda, who invites you to experience the prelude at your local Honda dealer. Action back in, 63-56 Milwaukee, 9.51 to go third quarter, along with John McLaughlin. This is Bob Neal at the Mecca in Milwaukee. Paxson. Oakley with a rebound, stripped away. 
And it's another Chicago turnover. That's four. Right. The Bulls have not scored in this half, John. And that's exactly what's happened. Over the Bucks have played five. some super defense. They've forced four turnovers now. So far, they've scored on three of them for six straight points. This could be the eighth straight, perhaps, depending on what happens. And the Bulls have not countered. So that's what Doug Collins obviously wanted to try to gain control of. Not unusual for Milwaukee. They're high in the league rankings in forcing turnovers. Correct. They have one of the best differentials in regards to turning it over versus forcing turnovers. They're very protective with the ball, but so is Chicago normally. There you go, Pressy, and the point off the turnover. That's four turnovers and eight points for Milwaukee, and it's 65-56, Bucks by nine, matching their biggest lead of the game. Both of these club average 15 and a half turnovers a game. Jordan against Pierce. Sigma with the illegal, he got caught. <laughs> and, and now there's where an illegal defense can help you because Corzine was open. The whistle stops. Chicago is having to face the zone. The basket comes away. That won't count. And even though you get the, even though you get this here, it's almost worth the gamble. Yes, it is. And, and you saw Jack. Look, he went for the double up on Jordan in the corner. He saw Lucas coming, so he then looked to the baseline. No one there. His man was out top. Too late. He's caught. If I'm a coach, I think I run the illegal defense several times a game, hoping I don't get caught that many times. And if I give up a couple of points, I may have saved much more. Right. That's a good point. For the box, 34, Terry Cummings. I said if I'm a coach, that, there's not a real strong chance of that. Here's Jordan. <laughs> hey, you know, the way they take him out of the color booth, I've got a shot at it, huh? You got it. And Jordan. Oh! This and the tip from Oakley. Well, now, was it basket interference? Oh, Does it go to Jordan or Oakley? We'll check. It's Oakley. Oakley gets the points. Yeah, I thought it was basket interference. Well, Don Nelson would like to hear you say that. He did, too. 65-59, Milwaukee. Here's Sellers in the ball game, who had a good offensive second quarter. Jordan gets wow. hammered. Bucks foul is on number 25, Paul Preston. Is on Preston. Two on Preston. The first one What's his play? Here. That's hang time, people. Oh. Michael Jordan. I think that was on the rim. I think Don and Bob were right there. I think that was on the rim. However, of course, the officials don't have the NFL instant replay available to them. How about that for the NBA, John? Excuse me, I, I could replay. Oh, NBA. What do you think? I don't like it. No, I, I don't even I, like it in the NFL. Yeah, I, I don't think I would like to see it. You know, I was going to make a comment too. Earl Strom's one of a few officials still around when I played a long time ago. I loved playing in his games. I felt like I always knew pretty much what he expected of me and, and what I could do and what I couldn't do, and he communicated with me. I liked that. Pressy. Paul Pressy. On the cut. Six-point Milwaukee lead. Eight minutes remaining, third quarter. Chicago having trouble solving the Milwaukee defense. Sellers open on the perimeter if they can find it. They do. And he scores. So they've got to move the ball and knock down the jumpers because that time Michael was triple team. Lucas foul. Locking foul. Number five. And it's on John Paxson. Here's a look at that triple team you're talking about. Okay, the ball will go in. Lucas will come in. Cummings will come in. Look, number leave Sellers open at the top. That's the best shot of the choices that Michael had. Interesting. Before the game, we talked to Don Nelson, who's always very cooperative with the media and talked to us about his game. And one of the questions I asked him we were going to use is, how do you defense Michael Jordan? Because these, these Bucks held Jordan to 11 points in Chicago is season low. And he says, are you kidding me? I'm going to tell you on national TV how I defense Michael Jordan. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Two things in that game. They did a good job on him. Michael also had a bit of an injury that night. He came up. I forget what the injury was, but he went down something. He still played, however. Bucks by five, 7.27 to go in the third. That's on Pressy coming through the screen of Sellers. The result of that is Sellers on the floor. That's his third, the second on the Bucks. This game right now reminding me, I, I alluded earlier to Michael Jordan, reminding me sometimes of Sugar Ray Leonard, the way he plays in flurries. <laughs> this game reminding me a little of a fight as they're kind of feeling each other out right here, waiting for somebody to make a move. Sick man. Cummings 
Sellers over Sellers. Seven point Bucks lead. But just a comment about what you said a moment ago about feeling one another out. When you play Milwaukee defensively, you know, they'll, they'll show different things to you, and they might change up at halftime something drastic. Doug Collins feels they can't make those types of changes, at least not this year with this team defensively, so they're going to be a bit more predictable. Oakley missing from the baseline. Chicago's shooting percentage is low. I'll give it to you in a moment for the half. They've been missing a lot here. Well, they're turning into jump shots, so. There's a turnover going for the Bulls this time. And Paxson finds himself alone in the lane. Lucas with the reverse. Well, Doug Collins calls timeout again. Lucas, well, one of the best on the break. Tough to stay in front of. And mild-mannered Doug Collins, not so mild at the moment, as it's a nine-point Milwaukee lead, 6.07 to go, third quarter. Bone suspension, handles and rides like no other car. The Accord from the engineers at Honda. Honda. True value hardware, it's more than a name. The Stanley Power Lock 2 is the rugged 20-foot measuring tape that's easy to take with you. It features a lifeguard blade, a power lock, and a handy stud marking. In April, the Stanley Power Lock 2 is just $6.99 as the True Value Extra. Look for the banner at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. True Value. Superstation Profile, Dion James of America's team. I'd say I'm a complete uh, go out. I play defense, I play offense. Right now, I feel as I'm playing good baseball. Uh, line drive hitter, a little bit of speed, and a little bit of power whenever I get a hold of one. I guess everybody has that. Uh, very excited. Play ball with America's team, the Atlanta Braves. Super Sports on the Superstation. Braves versus Reds, 7.35 Eastern tomorrow. The field goal percentage in this quarter telling the story, and Doug Collins knows it. The Milwaukee Bucks shooting 78%, the Chicago Bulls 25%. The Bulls, and I still have to credit the Milwaukee defense, the Bulls can't seem to get a shot away without a couple of people hanging on Jordan, sometimes three, and then it's somebody in everybody else's face, too. Well, if you have three people on Michael, that tells you someone's open for the Chicago Bulls, and when they get the ball, they've got to stick it. It's like playing a box and one in college. Let's see if the Bulls start looking to someone else. Here's Paxson. He's going to shoot it. He's going to miss it, however. Oakley keeps it alive. It'll belong to Chicago with a new shot clock. Bulls call. For the game, the Bucks shooting percentage has gone up to 57 from 52 percent, and the Bulls down to 48 percent. And there's a symbolic shot about Chicago. Michael Jordan from about five missing. For three. Pierce is fouled. <laughs> it had a chance. It did. Foul down number five, John Paxson. That's three. Chicago has Second. Sellers, Oakley, Paxson, Jordan, and Turner. And so, for all practical purposes, Paxson's going out and Sedale so 3 comes in now, but Chicago playing a three guard offense. But what else we've seen, Bob, if you really think about it, the Bucks have had primarily layups. Like that time, they get an inside penetration and get the foul. At the other end, we've seen a lot of jump shots. That's defense. That's the difference there, and the Bucks getting layups off of turnovers. And here comes Sidney Moncrief for Paul Pressey. I think it's important to note one of the things the Bucks are playing for in these final three games is that 50-win season. They want to get another one, and if they win two of these final three games, they will have 50 wins again this year. Piercey, Pierce is perfect at the line tonight. 
An 11 point Bucks lead, biggest lead by either team in this ball game. Chicago looking for some offense. Only two field goals for the Bulls in seven minutes here in this quarter. Foul. Milwaukee foul. That'll be the third team foul in on Milwaukee. On Sikma. He has two. Pressy has three for Milwaukee. Paxson three for Chicago. Nobody in foul trouble. Here come the Bucks. Nice play by Jordan. Oh. Jordan got it ahead to Oakley. Oakley fed Michael, and Michael will go to the free throw line. Well, that's the defense Doug Collins has talked about all year long. Watch. Michael Jordan. And look, this, he starts his own fast break, makes the pass, and Oakley with the beauty here. It's a big man doing that. Hey. And the Bucks alter the shot. They don't give up three. Jordan three out of three from the line in this quarter. Now he's four out of four. And has 26 on the night. Michael Jordan's shooting percentage from the field, not bad. Nine out of 21, just slightly below 50%. You know, you think about him. He's, he's about 40% of their offense, and he shoots 48% on the year. That means he's taking a lot of difficult, bad shots, shots at the buzzer. He would be a 52, 53% shooter probably if he could just take the shots that he wanted all the time. Behind the back pass from Lucas. Inside the Cummings. Goaltending on Oakley. Count the basket. Excellent pass by Sigma. He's a good passer. From Sigma. Four twenty-four remaining. Third quarter. Bottom right of your screen. Sellers. Now uh, he's cooled off a bit here, but it's kept alive. What an effort by Oakley. He is always on the glass. He couldn't get control, but he tapped it out for control. Jordan is fouled as he drives. That's Sidney Moncrief with the personal. And that is the 15th foul on Milwaukee. They're in the penalty, and Jordan will go to the line again. Bulls have only two team fouls. Now that's a good point. That's a reverse of the last quarter when the Bucks went to the line early. That's, that's opportunity time for the team that gets there first. Therefore, don't stand around and shoot jump shots. Go to the basket so that you have a chance to get to the line also. Ten points have been scored as Corzine comes Number into the ball game by the Bulls in this quarter, and six of them are Jordan from the free throw line. Two field goals by the Bulls. Yes, that's good defense by Milwaukee. Jordan finally misses one. It's ten point Bucks lead. Bucks led by one at the half. Six months. Three fifty one to go in the quarter. Double team on Oakley. He finds three to Elston Turner. And Turner now with ten points. His first since eight that he scored early in the quarter. Turner's a pretty good offensive player. He's given up a lot of shooting opportunity here tonight. But the Bulls may need him to go to the hoop a little more. Double team on Cummings. Nice play by Corzine ahead to Jordan. Now the Bulls doing some of the same that the Bucks have been doing, forcing turnovers off a of good double team, and then that capitalized. They capitalize on the fast break, easy basket. Three showing quickness, stopping Lucas. Oh, he is quick. Both are quick. Look at Sedale. Oh. Stripped away, and Jordan controls. Sedale three, who came to the Bulls from Philadelphia for Steve Coulter. He's playing better as the season progresses for this team. I see the Bulls getting inside for layups. The Bucks want to talk about it. And it's a six-point Bucks lead. Now they were up by 12, and there was three with a nice unselfish assist as he spotted the easy basket down to Oakley. 
Bob, it shows you what happens with defense. We've seen the Bulls capitalize quickly here the last two times off of forced turnovers because of good defense. And what did it give them? Not jump shots. It gave them layups. They're right back in this one. Shows you how quickly it turns. By the way, you probably saw the score earlier. Philadelphia defeated Washington tonight, 113 to 105. We talked to Don Nelson about who he would like to play and whether it would be Philadelphia or Washington. Here's what he responded prior to the game. Well, it's, it's obviously very important for everybody to get uh, the best position that they can get. Now, right now, we feel that we're pretty well locked into where we are. We could move ahead, but probably not. If it happens, that's fine. We are keyed in right now to playing Philadelphia. I think that's who we're going to play, and, uh, and we're, we'd be ready to do that. So Milwaukee in fourth place in the Eastern Conference, Philadelphia in fifth place, and it looks like they'll probably stay there uh, with that victory over Washington tonight. So Milwaukee, Philadelphia would be an interesting matchup with yes. Moses, uh, with uh, uh, Philadelphia, with Barkley if he comes back from his injury. Right, and of course Maurice Cheeks back, and look at the standings as they are right now. However, there can still be changes throughout this season. Uh, Washington, Indiana, and Chicago, they, that changes on a daily basis, and therefore it's very difficult to call what the playoff situation will be. Atlanta could still overtake Boston. The Atlanta Hawks playing as well as anybody. Uh, they're trailing Indiana at Indiana, though, and the Hawks yes. have a potential of playing the Indiana Pacers in the opening round of the playoffs, and Indiana has given Atlanta trouble all year long. So yes, the entire have. Eastern Conference is going to be uh, fascinating come playoff time. Well, if Atlanta were to beat Boston out for the best record, that's key if it goes to... Uh, uh, well, they would have it in each series. They would have the home court advantage. That's Pressy inside. And also, they would change brackets. So uh, Atlanta would move out of that bracket that Detroit's in and move into the one that Milwaukee and Philadelphia is in. It's a six-point Bucks lead over the Bulls. 2.16 to go in this quarter. We learned that Atlanta and Indiana are now tied. Here's Turner. And Turner hitting well from the perimeter. 12 points for Elston Turner. Eight straight points for the Chicago Bulls. Bucks lead by four. Moncrief with a big basket for the Bucks. Oh, what a career he's had in Milwaukee. Moncrief's first points of this game. Bucks by six, 144 to go third quarter. Three, long range. Corzine kept it alive, but the shot clock's to three. Got it away, but missed it. The tip by Jordan. Oh, what an effort. He came from under the basket. That <laughs> wasn't pretty, but they'll take it. And we've got a Milwaukee foul. Yeah. Yes. Someone really nailed Michael Jordan. It may have been Paul Preston. Yes. Watch Jordan work on the offensive board here. No one really blocks him out. And look at that left-handed tip. <laughs> that foul, by the way, was on Paul Pressey from Milwaukee. That's his fourth. Jordan missing badly. Hodges out of control. Wanted Moncrief, but by the time Hodges gathered himself, Sidney had moved. It was just a miscue. Sidney, of course, didn't know where Hodges was going to go with it. Good defense to stay in front of Hodges. Bulls can pull to within two after trailing by 12 in this, the third quarter. Jordan pulls the Bulls to within two, 80-78. Jordan has 34. What a marvelous job the Bulls have done here. Doug has used some good timeouts. They've changed their defense. Their defense has been extremely good the last, what, four or five minutes. How did Moncrief ever get that shot off? He was double teamed, and Corzine flew in his face as he shot it. 34 seconds to go in the quarter. Chicago's been really strong on the boards. They're out rebounding Milwaukee 33 to 24, and Oakley with 17 rebounds. Corzine. With two seconds to go on the shot clock, Corzine misses. Bucks lead by four. You see the time remaining in the third quarter. Three with the foul, and he had one to give, probably a wise one. 
Chicago foul number three. Sellers and three. Brewer. That's two the ball game three. for Chicago and Milwaukee, respectively. Third team. You think Sedell knew what he was doing? You think he knew he had one to give? I say yes. Sometimes I wonder because <laughs> many players aren't aware of the foul situation often enough. It's something that the coaches. A lot of the assistant coaches try to make the players aware of all the time. Timeouts Number remaining five. in the foul Team situation. Oh, right. Putting him on the line. They, were they saying that Hodges was shooting? Apparently, because that was only the third Chicago team foul with four seconds to go in the quarter. Well, that's a strange one on me, John. Here is Dudley Bradley entering the ball game for Milwaukee. Craig Hodges slipping at the free throw line, only one of three. Pressure. 82 78 at the buzzer. A long one off the board. And the Bucks increase their lead from one to five points as we end the third quarter. 83-78, Milwaukee leading the Chicago Bulls. What's this tough guy? After aftershave skin conditioner. I know. I thought I was the only guy with sensitive skin. Every time I shave, I get it right here. What do you fellas use? Because shaving irritates my whole face. After. Try it. Looks different. It's rich. It's a lotion. After soothes razor scrape sensitive skin. Hey, this feels great and smells good too. Terrific. Sensible care for sensitive skin. After aftershave skin conditioner. By Menon. I played a lot of ball at the boys' club when I was a kid. The gym helped me beat the streets, but I learned a lot more at the club than how to play basketball. I learned how to win off the court, too. The boys' club has been teaching kids how to be winners for a long time. Okay, guys, let's go. Today, kids need the boys' club more than ever. Your help can make a real difference. The club that beats the streets could use a hand. Yours. John, this may answer our question as to whether it was a shooting foul. And it's also frustration. Look, Sigma with a little hold here on the pick. Sedale three grabs Hodges, and it looked like he was shooting. And he was going to shoot with his left hand, right? <laughs> hey, when you're a shooter, it, ask Rick Barry. He'll ask, tell you. Ask John McLaughlin. I saw you <laughs> fill up the basket a few times. <laughs> well, I never got as many off as Rick did, though. <laughs> right. And they have ruled, we just double checked with the official scores, that it was literally a field goal attempt. So there you go. Actually, from our angle, we must explain it. From the angle we had, it really looked like Hodges was trying to make a pass until we saw the replay. Uh, thanks to Tom Smith, our director tonight, who always provides the video truth. We call it Mr. Video Truth. VT. <laughs> Bucks 83, Bulls 78. 12 minutes remaining here at the Mecca in Milwaukee. Bob Neal, John McLaughlin with you. It's the two playoff-bound neighborhood rivals. Chicago about 80 miles south of Milwaukee here on Lake Michigan. Turner with the loose ball to Paxson. Elston Turner's played a good ball game tonight. Yes, he has. Now, see, this is the unit that they look for sellers and Sedale 3. Although Turner can knock in the jumpers, too. Well, that shot clock is about to expire. It was down to three. Three with a very lucky play on Chicago's part. Well, Chicago couldn't get anything, and Corzine threw right. out a prayer. But, but if you notice what happened, uh, he was moving around out there, and, and everyone lost him in the white jerseys. No block out. He walked right in. There's Turner with two consecutive good plays defensively. He's a good rebounder also as a guy. Bucks by three. 
Jordan on the bench right now. Chicago looking for offense, and they find it in the name of Dave Corzine. Don Nelson wants a 20-second timeout. He just does not like the defense he's seeing at all, and Corzine's getting open often on that jump shot, and Michael doing a little homework. Michael Jordan has 34 points at this point in the ball game. First round coverage of the NBA playoffs begins with a double header one week from Thursday. Don't miss it. We'll keep you posted on where we go from there as we'll pick the games we think you'll find very interesting. The home of the NBA playoffs right here on the Superstation. We've been talking all about Eastern Conference tonight, John, because obviously two Eastern Conference teams here, but there are a couple of dark horses out there in the West. It's not just Los Angeles we're going to be talking about either. Well, we think Dallas, of course, is an interesting team to watch. Keep your eye on them. Portland having an outstanding year with new coach Mike Schuler at the helm. 10.38 to go in the ballgame. Bucks lead it by one. Good defensive play again by Elston Turner. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Coming to the long one. Turner kept it alive. Three controls. Sellers missing, but the tip is in. And they'll give him the basket on the tip for Zine up there, too. But Credit Sellers with a hoop. He has 12. And the Bulls have retaken the lead after trailing by 12 and scoring only two field goals in the first eight minutes of the third quarter. Sellers with the long rebound for Chicago. And the good news for the Bulls is Jordan's about to come back in. The bad news is Sigma's about to return from Milwaukee from a Chicago viewpoint. Elston Turner. Corzine. And he got a loose ball foul as Corzine tried to control. Well, the Bulls have been in control of the boards all night long, and now they're getting some key offensive rebounds, and they've done that off and on throughout this second half. You see Jordan hit 15, rested for seven, hit 12. Now, if that stays uh, down, he's only going to get six or seven in this quarter, but I don't think no. that, that will hold true. I don't either. Bulls by one as Jordan returns to the lineup, and as does Charles Oakley. Corzine takes a rest. Jordan isolated against a double team. <laughs> and just looking for the opening. Finds three, but he misses it. Beautiful play by Chicago. They couldn't get it to drop. Stripped away by Jordan. Blocked by Sellers. Bulls step on the baseline. John Lucas found him exactly where he did not want to be. <laughs> and he did the only thing he could do in that situation is shoot it because when he starts trying to pass, he's going to get a three-second call. Bulls by one, 17 seconds on the shot clock. Bulls are doing a good job of converting from offense to defense to take away that break. Bulls second in the NBA in fewest points allowed. Plays some tough defense. Sigma doesn't get the bounce, but Cummings is there. Banged away by three. There's going to be a foul. And it's on Sedale. The value of offensive rebounds on the missed shot because Terry Cummings was there. Look at the pushing and shoving and Cummings gaining good position, much stronger than Sellers. Foul on three. Each team with one team foul out. Illegal defense called. <laughs> that saved a basket. That's twice that's happened right. in this game. You had every red jersey, every man in a red jersey, Chicago, looking to the ball, and that's when Ricky Pierce came right inside the paint. Bucks down by one. Hodges for three. Over Paxson. Hodges second three-pointer of this ball game and the Bucks go up by two. Paxson wanted the three-pointer but Lucas came out on him. Oakley with the turnaround over Sigma. Tough shot. Just straight two-man game and Oakley and Sigma matching up. The Bucks want to take that size advantage inside but so did Oakley. <laughs> Cummings with a power move, but back comes Oakley to wail at the ball. Here comes three. Paxson has it blocked by Cummings. Jordan's there to steal it and finger roll it home. 
opportunity. He's aware of where the ball is, Michael Jordan. Michael with that defensive effort. Bulls by two. Jordan. Oh. 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 Sickman with the personal. The Bulls defense has been just superb, and they've taken the Bucks away inside. There's the block, and look, Sigma really throws it right to Michael, and Sigma normally very sure passer. Not in that case. Michael Jordan at the line for Chicago. As many times as I've seen this man play basketball, I'm constantly amazed at his full court game. For Chicago, there is no single player I can ever think of to be totally dominant in so many areas. You have to be aware of where he is at all times. Look at this. And the Bulls after this game have two games remaining. So if Michael just hits Michael at his average of 36.7 per game, he's going to join that very thin air club of 3,000 points in a single season. You don't see many men 6'5 dominate the game like Michael Jordan does. Bucks had a 12-point lead with 3.54 to go in the third quarter, and the Bulls have now pulled out by four with 7.37 to go in the game. Pressy on the drive and the basket, a three-point opportunity for Paul Pressy. Pressy and a foul. That's Pressy's type of play, giving the ball the top of the circle in that area. And he'll take most people, but still he has to shoot a rather difficult shot. Over Oakley. Oakley just missing the block. Oakley roams well. He gives help well, and that's why he gets a number of blocks. Gene Banks has played very few minutes for Chicago tonight. Normally a very fine defensive forward. Has an injured left hand, and Elston Turner has played in his stead and done a pretty good job. But the Bulls give up some, some pounds and some height when Banks isn't in there. Well, they're able to do that against Milwaukee because of Pressy playing up on the front line also. So the three-point conversion, now it's a one-point Chicago lead. Shot clock to six. Yeah. Oakley, he's <laughs> been dynamite on the baseline. That's 20 points. Oakley's listed at 6'9". Now, he's having to play on Jack Sigma, who's uh, somewhat bigger at 7 feet. Bulls 92, Bucks 89, 6.56 to go in the ball game. Oh. Oakley is 10 of 13 shooting, by the way. Fouls on Jordan. Well, we've got ourselves a ball game here, folks. 6.55 remaining, Bulls 92, Bucks 89. Draft beer. It's always been the smoothest, freshest beer around. Poured straight from the tap. And now, there's a true draft beer in a bottle. Miller Genuine Draft. It's not heat pasteurized like most bottled beers. It's cold filtered for real draft smoothness. Ask for Miller Genuine Draft. The Miller with the black label. It's beer at its best. Surprise! The fuel injected CRXSI. Conica Tough. Conica's royal copiers are tough. Reliability and dependability have earned them a tough reputation. Conica's royal copiers, the right choice for tough jobs. The Papermate metal roller pen dries fast so it doesn't smudge or smear like the uh, leading rollerball pen. The Papermate metal roller. Neater is better. There's a good shot of John McLaughlin, who uh, during the commercial timeouts doubles his mascot for the Bucks. Well, that is the job they offered me when I retired, but I talked him into another one. <laughs> there he is. There's John Bango the Buck. <laughs> Bango. Bulls 92, Bucks 89. John McLaughlin's number retired hanging here at the Mecca, along with uh, some other very famous numbers, particularly that number one, Oscar, Oscar Robertson. Oscar Robertson. 
Look at that oh. difference there, 44 to 28. And, and a lot of those coming off the offensive boards, which are turning into baskets for Chicago in particular. And 17 of those Chicago rebounds belong to Oakley. Big turnover. And Jordan coming up with the ball, pulls by three, 6.43 remaining in the ball game from the Mecca in Milwaukee. This has been a gum chopper. A what? A gum chomper. <laughs> That's a Hoosier term. Oh, yeah, well, sure. <laughs> three coming off the screen from the baseline. Sidale, three. Sidale, three. From Oakland. You cannot emphasize enough the job the Bulls have done here in the second half after being down by 12. Here's Fines Hodges. One of the three point shot, but three came out on him. Cummings. Jordan battling, but Sigma winning that battle. Bulls by five. Cummings. Big bucket for Terry Cummings. Who has 18 points. Cummings averages 20.9 per game to lead Milwaukee. He's close to that average. Three-point Bulls lead. Shot clock to seven. Jordan from long range. His perimeter shot has not been dropping tonight, even though he has 36 points. Almost turnover. Michael right there. Oakley said I was pushed away on the offensive boards. The Bucks must concentrate in that area because at this point they've given up 14 points to the offensive glass. Great effort by Chicago. The Bucks only have three points off their offensive glass. Well, the Bucks got it across the timeline with about half a second to spare only. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Shot clock down to nine. Cummings. Another big bucket from Terry Cummings. And it's a one-point Bulls lead, 5-11 remaining. Cummings spinning off the screen inside. He may need help. Oakley may need help, that is, on that play. Cummings at 20 points now. There's that Milwaukee defense. Let's see what they do against it. They get it to Jordan, who's double-teamed, but comes out of nowhere. <laughs> double-teamed the, the third man coming over to help, and he goes up in between them. Bulls by three. Jordan with 40 points on the game. That's the 36th time this year that Jordan has scored 40. He never seems to get tired either. He had 53 yesterday afternoon in Chicago. They should take his blood out, look at it, see what's in it, put it back in him. Try to remake it. I think it's unbelievable. And by a part of the franchise, Sigma from long range. Sellers. Takes it from Cummings. So you know, three takes it from Sellers. Sellers didn't want to give it to him. <laughs> ah, the youngsters. Brad Sellers. <laughs> He's going to be heard from for a long time in the NBA. What do you mean, rookie? <laughs> Shot clock down to five seconds. Three. To Elston Turner. And Elston Turner has 14 points. Oh boy, Sedale Freed made that happen. He took the ball to Turner, who continued to move and come around for the jump. That ties Turner's season high. Oakley with a big board. Sellers with good, re with good defense. Bulls by five, 338 to go in this ball game. Chicago, if there's been any single thing in my view, John, that they've dominated in the game, it's been right there, and that's on the rebound. Oh, no question. And they've played some good defense when they've had to. And look, Michael Jordan for the layoff. Mm -hmm. Timeout, Milwaukee, trailing by seven. There have been a 15-point turnaround since the midway point of the third quarter. Ace Best Buys, like 20 Ace Heavy Duty Trash Bags for $249. Ace is the place. An Ace Round Point Shovel for $299 after rebate. And Wells Lamont Cowhide Work Gloves for $499 with free canvas gloves. Ace is the place. With the help of hardware men. You know, my dad was a mechanic, so I learned at an early age how important it is to use the right motor oil. Well, cars have gotten real complicated since then. So for today's cars, you need today's motor oil. New Superflow from Exxon. Hey, this is a real winner. It's got this special additive wear band. Then super at block and wear around the rings, cam, pistons, all over your engine. So you want your engine to last? Go with the flow. New Superflow. 
Michael Jordan, no timeout. Michael into the front court. Left corner shot by Jordan. Go! Oh! Oh! Two seconds left. Comes the lever underneath, packed to beat. Pat gets it. One second, and the buzzer good. Oh, believable. Comes in the Tucker. Ewing sets a screen. The shot is off. Loose ball. Ewing goes up. The basket counts. America's game. It's fantastic. Here is vintage Jordan. So get the ball. Now watch the double team. He has just a little bit of room on the baseline. Look, tippy toes around it and explodes to the basket. There was a triple team on him when he hit it. Now look, contact. He stays with it, then finally beats the contact. Sigma comes over for help, and he still makes the shot over a seven-footer. 42 points tonight for Michael Jordan and eight rebounds. Now, the Bucks have to score now and shut down the Bulls and score again right away, or they've got real problems. Sigma got Oakley airborne, and Oakley gets the foul. Look at the field goal percentages, how they've changed in these different quarters tonight. And the Bucks' big problem now, 24% in this period, and that's thanks to good Chicago defense. Pierce. Again, see, a tough shot because of the defense. And Oakley there for the rebound. Oakley with 18 rebounds. 100 to 93 Bulls, 250 remaining. Big defensive series here for Milwaukee. Nine seconds on the clock. Jordan, oh, he's on fire. They're going to have to call engine company number five over from downtown Milwaukee if they're going to try to cool him off. Michael Jordan now with 44 points. You add the rebounding, and you, you throw in just a dash of Michael Jordan here in the fourth quarter, and uh, what are you going to do? Well, here's what we've seen. Uh, we've seen excellent defense by both teams, but not all the time. And Chicago has turned it on here in this fourth quarter. They've held the Bucks' shooting percentage to a terrible 24%. And they've capitalized at the other end on good pursuit percentage shooting by Chicago. It's been Michael, but just every now and then to just pepper in some of the other guys, like Elston Turner knocking in a shot, different people contributing. Just when it's a big defensive effort time for Milwaukee, here's what Jordan does to you. Well, when he has his jumper going, what are you going to do with it? I mean... When you can't fall off of him and push him to the outside, how do you play the man? I don't have the answer. Well, this is a nine-point game. You can see the Bulls are used to playing them close. They lost 13 games, the Chicago Bulls have this year, by, 13 po by three points or less. 13 losses by three points or less. That's just amazing. Well, and D Doug Collins feels that uh, one reason for that is, you know, it, uh, when it gets tight, everyone knows where he's going. You're going to Michael Jordan, and he can't beat three and four people every night, and therefore the reason. Look at that score. Atlanta leading Indiana by three. The Atlanta Hawks hot on the trail of Boston. The Celtics idle tonight, not playing. Detroit way out in front of the New York Knicks. Detroit currently in third place in the Eastern Conference, and Milwaukee with a with an outside shot of catching Detroit for the third place spot. But that win tonight, if Detroit goes ahead and wins, and I think they will, yes. will virtually tie it up because Detroit would have to lose the rest of their games. Milwaukee would have to come back here from a nine-point deficit and win. Milwaukee loses this game tonight. They will end up in fourth place in the Eastern Conference. Correct. Stripped away from Sigma. And it's Michael Jordan with the foul. That's his fifth. Nine-point game, 2.33 in the NBA. A lot of time remaining. The Chicago Bulls with the toughest road to go to finish this regular season. They have to play Atlanta in Chicago on Thursday at Boston on Friday. But the Bulls have played tough here tonight. They've had one victory at the Mecca already this year. Sigma goes to the line. Bucks trailing by nine. The Bulls win this game tonight. This will be the uh, first time they've won the season series against Milwaukee since 76-77. Huh. They've played Milwaukee Bucks extremely well all season long, obviously. Bulls have lost six in a row on the road. Last road victory. Seven games ago was at Sacramento. And speaking of streaks, Milwaukee's won four in a row here at home. Sigma with unusual. very big misses. 
the Bucks real trouble now. It will be very difficult for them to win. They're going to have to start looking for the three-point shots. Chicago handling that well. Gets fouled as he drives. Oh. Boy, Chicago spread the floor so well, and that's as you had indicated, Bob. Used the quickness of Sedale three, found the people in the corners, and once you break the initial pressure in the backcourt, you can get some opportunities, as Oakley found out. Charles Oakley, 20 points, 18 rebounds, 10 of 13 from the field, and he's shooting at 77% from the line tonight. He's had himself a whale of a ball game. Oh, yes, he has. And we always have a Miller-like player of the game immediately following the game, and it's whenever Jordan or uh, Magic Johnson or someone like that uh, is in a ball game, it's hard not to give them player of the game. But I'll tell you, Oakley has really made a statement for himself tonight. This is one you could split it evenly. Can you get an idea of my, where maybe I'm drifting with my vote? Yes, I hear you. Now, Paxson's back in. Sellers is out. Hodges came in for Milwaukee because of the three-point shot. They need it. Double-double for Charles Oakley. This is a very gratifying win for Chicago if they can get it because they've had to play hard and they've had to come from behind. Lucas with the drive and the hoop. They let him go, didn't foul him. Intelligent defensive play. Intelligent lack of defensive play by Chicago that time. Clock down to two minutes. <laughs> that's, that's good. Did that yeah, no, I like me. that. Yeah, help that, me, that help makes me. sense. <laughs> Chicago spreading the floor, shot clock to six. Three to Oakley. See, penetration will always make the defense adjust. Sigma came through the penetration. That leaves Oakley open. And that was at the buzzer on the shot clock for three. Oh, that's a big one by Craig Hodges. His third three-pointer of the night, 104-98. Jordan hammered hard as he drives. But that's what he does so well at the end of the game, in addition to just hitting the buckets. That's five on Sigma. Is Jordan takes it to the hoop and makes you foul him. Well, and when you're that quick, and when you can jump this well, you can get above people. Look, Sigma comes over, goes up as high as he can, and still has to hit Jordan on the arm because he takes it back. Look at this. And this is a great defensive player with Jordan, but Jordan is just too good. Michael Jordan has Teflon-coated skin. Or else is, he beat a hospital. <laughs> what a pounding he takes. He does. That's 45 for Jordan tonight. And remember, he's coming off a 53-point performance just yesterday afternoon at Chicago. As much as we see him when we cover the NBA, we still marvel at what he accomplishes each time. It's why the fans line up early when Chicago comes to town. Bressie, Milwaukee hanging right in here. Just like the snap of the finger, it's a five-point game. The Bucks still have a shot at it, but they must contain the Bulls. Turner with a shot clock down to eight. They get it to Michael. Against the double team. He hits Sellers. Well, when the Bulls have needed it, they've come in with layups. Assist from Jordan. Sellers with a big basket. Seven-point Bulls lead. Shot of the game clock down to 104. Cummings. It's still at five with a minute left. That's a three and a two for Milwaukee. That's why they're thinking. The Bulls have it spread. Three. Guarded by Lucas. Here's the double team now. They hit the open man. Elston Turner decided not to shoot. Gets it to Jordan with five seconds. And there's the big Milwaukee defensive play. Trailing by five. Lucas for three. And the holding foul is going on. Milwaukee. And it's Sidney Moncrief. Now, you might want to question, is that the time to pull up for the three? You have Hodges on the left, who's a great three-point shooter. Lucas has been pretty good at it this season. One argument, no. Go for the two. You may have time for some more twos. And we'll see the block here in just a moment, I believe. It's Paul Pressey coming over to play Jordan. No, that's on the pass. That's the beautiful layup by Sellers. And Jordan knows where his teammates are. They don't break. That's why Chicago can get so good so fast as they continue to add a supporting cast for Michael Jordan. He can make them better. Much, much in that sense in the tradition of Magic Johnson, in my view, even oh, yes. though they're very different players. 
No argument here. <laughs> three, putting some nails in the coffin. Now it's seven points, 33 seconds left. Hodges for three. He's four for four. Unconscious. It's a four-point game with 29 seconds remaining. What a pass by Pressy to get that up to Hodges. Jordan is fouled. 19 seconds remaining. That's all they could do. Both teams in the penalty. Well, Jordan's an 86 percent shooter from the line. I saw him come in here in Milwaukee one night when he was injured in a promotion the Bucks had, and he went out on this promotion in 24 seconds. And he made nine free throws with his sport coat on in 24 seconds. <laughs> he didn't take his sport coat off. Maybe that's a a, a, a new twist. <laughs> hey. He needs his sport coat. <laughs> Give him yours. <laughs> <laughs> that, that for certain drop his percentage. That would cramp him This off, is huh? proving to be an intelligent foul now. This is a four-point game, 19 seconds remaining. Five-point game. Bulls leading by five, 19 oh, seconds oh, remaining. Milwaukee calls timeout. They're a three and a two away from tying. Stay with us. When you want the rich, smooth taste of real draft beer, ask for Miller Genuine Draft, the Miller with the green label. Green? Just kidding, guys. Ask for Miller Genuine Draft, the Miller with the black label. That's not funny, Pat. Late one night, when all the families and all the houses all across the land were fast asleep, all of their old family cars were taken away. In their places were left Shiny new Honda Accords. And they all drove happily ever after. You begin with raw steel. Shape it with fire, muscle, and sweat. Polish it to razor sharp perfection. We're looking for a few good men with a medal to be Marines. When you want the rich, smooth, fresh taste of real draft beer in a bottle, ask for Miller Genuine Draft. The Miller with the black label. It's beer at its best. Milwaukee comes away from the Don Nelson timeout. 19 seconds remaining. Bulls leading 110-105. Bucks ball. The Bulls going small now. Coming to the reverse. Three-point game. 15 seconds left. Cummings almost got it away from Jordan, but the foul and Michael will go to the line with 46 points and an opportunity for two more. 13 seconds to go in the game. Chicago is three with 10 assists in this ball game. Since he's come in, he's really been a factor in favor of the Chicago turnaround. Three had seven assists and 10 points in only 26 minutes yesterday. He is slowly but surely becoming Chicago's point guard in crunch time. 47 for Jordan. That's 100 points in less than 24 hours for Michael Jordan in the NBA. You know, that would be difficult to do against a seventh grade team for most of us. 48. Jordan for the potential for a 50 point game here. Hodges for three. Misses it this time. Michael with the ball. And he's fouled. If he hits them both, Michael Jordan will have back-to-back fifties. -back <laughs> Unbelievable. Bernard King had back-to-back fifties. -back back I'm certain Will Chamberlain. Well, I'm not certain Will Chamberlain may have had, but I don't even recall that. Watching Michael in a situation like this, if you saw both of these games, it, I don't know if that, that would be comparable to seeing Will score 100, but this certainly has to be up there at the top of the list with it. Jordan with 48, 49, and we're going to have to talk now about the Miller Lite player of the game. I had this well, big ballot for Charles Oakley, but I did too. But how do you how do you not give it to a man who gets 50 points in a ball game? 
And he got 50. I mean, come on. <laughs> I guess the election is over. Bulls lead by seven at the buzzer. That won't count. Bulls have beaten the Bucks and have won the season series four to two for the first time in ten years. And Doug Collins is really delighted. He's very, as you obviously uh, Don Nelson is not, but Doug Collins was probably happier with Sellers and with Elston Turner and three than even the 50 points from Michael Jordan. We'll check in on some scores and be back in a moment. The Great American Face. Rugged. Distinctive. The Great American Razor. Actra. Solid. Pivots for closeness. The Great American Face deserves the Great American Shave. Actra. Only from Gillette. It's a jungle. That's how it feels when you're searching for life insurance. The natives don't speak your language. You feel lost, in the dark, scared. But there is a sign of civilization. With Prudential, your agent will explain things clearly and work with you until you have a piece of the rock you feel comfortable with. No wonder more people choose Prudential for life insurance than any other company. You'll feel right by the rock. Prudential Life Insurance. There's a time to think about life insurance, and State Farm is there. I'm State Farm agent Mike Callen. The biggest reasons young parents start thinking about life insurance are kids. Parents want someone who can explain life insurance and someone who knows how to listen, too, so it'll fit their needs. And as a family's needs grow and change, they want someone who will be there to keep that life insurance up to date. That's why they come to State Farm agents. And like a good neighbor. And that's why they stay. State Farm is there. Just like that, this AC copper core spark plug can fire 30 times. That's the firepower today's high revving car engines need. What about your plugs? If they can't fire for up to 30,000 miles, oh, maybe you're missing out on peak performance. For the AC Delco retailer nearest you, just give me a call at 1 800 AC Delco. Wait for trouble, and you've got it. My new Olympus is the only autofocus SLR with a built-in flash. Like this. In case I want to shoot. Like this. The new Olympus OM77AF. The only autofocus SLR that does it all. TBS sports coverage of the NBA has been brought to you by Honda, who invites you to experience the Civic Wagon at your local Honda dealer. And by Miller Genuine Draft. Cold filtered for real draft smoothness. It's beer at its best. This is Charlie Neal in Atlanta. You just saw the Chicago Bulls beat Milwaukee 114 to 107, snapping the Bucks' three game win streak. Michael Jordan, 50 points tonight, 53 yesterday, 103 points in two days. That's why he's the league's leading scorer. Let's update you on a couple of other games tonight. First of all, in New York, the Pistons winning it. One, or leading rather, that's in the fourth period, 114 to 96. Pistons trying to snap a three game losing streak. In Philadelphia tonight, it was the 76ers beating Washington 113 to 105. Cliff Robinson had 22 points for the Sixers. Mo Cheeks, 15 points and 19 assists coming back off the injury. And in, in Indiana, with 14 seconds left in that game, Atlanta leading uh, the Pacers 101 to 98. And Dominique Wilkins, so far, 34 points in that game. San Antonio, Sacramento just underway. And TBS closes out its regular season NBA coverage Friday night in Houston. That's when the Rockets host Dallas at 8.05. Then next Thursday, we'll begin our playoff coverage. 16 teams vie for the NBA championship and the Larry O'Brien Trophy. So join us for all the action. Now let's go back to Milwaukee for Bob and John for the light player of the game. Thank you, Charlie Neal. Well, they're, they're tuning up for the playoffs. The great ones are coming out of the woodwork. Jordan, Dominique Wilkins, Larry Bird, they're all really starting to load up And tonight's player of the game. Who can deny it? Michael Jordan. On behalf of Miller Lite Turner Broadcasting, proud to donate $1,000 to the Multiple Sclerosis Foundation in the name of Air Jordan. Michael Jordan with 50 points, 9 rebounds, 52% from the field. He was 18 for 22 from the line. He had 4 steals, 4 assists, and 3 blocks in this ballgame. 
game and yet received help from Charles Oakley, Sedale Threat, Elston Turner. This was a team game, a team victory in spite of Michael's great performance. And Chicago wins the season series four games to two over Milwaukee. And if Indiana does lose to Atlanta, Chicago will move up to seventh in the Eastern Conference standings. John McLaughlin enjoyed working with you once again tonight. Thank, Thank you. you, Bob. On behalf of our entire TBS sports crew from the Mecca in Milwaukee, this is Bob Neal. So long, everybody. Thank you.